It has been a riveting couple of days so far here at the Atlanta Major, but it is nearly done and dusted. Just one more series to go here on the A-Stream for us to find out who our final team is that's going through to the Swiss stages in phase two and who will be the last team going home. Tim, it's Dark Zero versus Fury. On paper, we said it earlier today, Dark Zero should have this one in the bag, but you really can't put Fury out of this one given how they've played yesterday in their second best of three against Knights. No, you can't. They've had a very different day today. Fury have been able to watch the game. They've been able to do a bit of studying for maybe who they're going to play against. They've, you know, maybe had a bit of a relax. They've had some time. Whereas Dark Zero have had a loss. An unexpected loss, maybe. You know, I'm sure they went in there with the confident mentality that they were going to go through and beat G2. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They've now got to get back up from that. And it just puts them in a slightly different position. You all right there? This is a hair problem. I know you don't know what this problem is, Tim, but I just observed it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a problem. I'm telling yeah, you. Get the group bracket up. Quick production. Put it up. Put it up. Enjoy your hair, Des. <laughs> I'll do my very best, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Right, talk about this graphic, Tim, while I sort this out. Go on, then. Uh, we're having a look at Group C. This is how we have got to where we are. We see that G2 won that game earlier, 8-6 in overtime against Dark Zero, which sent them straight through to Phase 2. Uh, we had Fury and Knights yesterday playing in that first elimination match for the group, being both of the losing teams from the first round. Fury won 2-0 and kept themselves fighting for another day, but this could be their final fight as they match up with Dark Zero in the lower bracket. Shall we call it? the final uh, the winner is yeah. going to go through to phase two the loser goes home so of course we've got a best of three it's still sticking up i know it is <laughs> I, lo I lost this fight i just accepted it was a thing honestly <laughs> cheers tim no problem <laughs> We'll take a look at what map we're going to in just a moment as well. But for this one, I think given how DZ played earlier on, it could have been G2 here as well. It was a really close game right up until we got into overtime where G2 pulled out a couple rounds back to back. In the earlier parts of that game, it was all DZ running away with it. They were very firmly in control. And I think we may see very much the same here, them being quite firmly in control of this game. Cheers, Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. No problem. Let's talk about this veto. Why have you gone? Come back. I, could, I don't know if I, There we go. Come back. Could, there we go. Right. Tim, Tim. Do you want me to come back? Come back. Yeah, come back. Come back. Talk about the veto, Tim. Uh, ooh, veto. So what have we got? We've got Chalet Clubhouse Oregon. Honestly, that is my favourite set of three maps that we've had so far. Um, I will say, out of all of the games that we've done, uh, I'm loving a bit of that, especially that Chalet start. I always have a good Chalet. chalet. You do. Playing watching, casting, love a bit of Chalet. It's my favorite map at the minute. In the map. Then you've got the two real classic maps in Club and Oregon as well. We've had a bit of Oregon already so far, but I'm looking forward to a bit of Club. Yeah, We haven't absolutely. had a Club yet so far. Since yeah, I think for the two maps that we're definitely going to get, I think these are fantastic. I'm, it the, the really is mouth-watering. I'm looking forward to this one. You can go back now. I can go, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> as you can tell, we are on boxes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just so small. <laughs> the thing is, I actually think because yours is slightly smaller than mine. You were on this one earlier, but I am quite a way taller than you at the minute. You are, to be fair. Step off for a second. How tall are you compared to me? Swap round. No, no, no. In, well, let's do that as well. <laughs> See, that's more that's, like the same height. That's the day we now step been, off the boxes in general. Off the boxes, look. Next to me. There is some siege coming. Yeah, there is a little bit. We're a little <laughs> bit taller. We're just a pre-show entertainment, and entertainment we use very, very loosely on this one is the best way I can describe it. I feel real tall than you now. Chalet's ready. Let's get into it. The pre-show entertainment, air quotes, is finished. Here we go for Matt, one of this best of three, Tim. You know what I love? We get to the end of things like play-ins, and it just turns into a massive mess of battle. I absolutely love it. It's chaos, just like the play-ins themselves. Uh, here we go, then. Dark Zero versus Fury. Uh, every fan favourite coming in, Dark Zero. 81% of the social vote to only 19% back in Fury. Uh, you know, like we've said, on paper, yes, you have to back Dark Zero here. Fury struggled against G2, um, but you know, we go down that rabbit hole. Fury struggled against G2, but G2 beat Dark Zero. Does that mean Dark Zero are on a level with Fury? Who knows? We're about to find out. We can go round and round in circles, but there's only one way to answer the question. My honest expectation here um, is that Dark Zero come in and get a job done. Uh, I think that uh, we saw Fury beat Knights, but there were mistakes there. Mistakes that weren't always punished. They're not going to have that same freedom. They're not going to have that same leeway against a team 
like Dark Zero, I would expect them to really heavily punish this team if they give them any opportunity to. But let's not write off players like BG Man went big yesterday. I9 had moments yesterday. Dark went big yesterday. Yeah. There is plenty of opportunity here for Fury to stun Dark Zero. What I will say is, if Fury are going to win this, I think they need to win it quicker rather than slower. And obviously there's another game going on at the same time. Just to remind you, there are two streams running. Twitch.tv forward slash Rainbow Six Bravo is where you can catch all the action between Bliss and Wolves. Bliss are currently 4-0 up. Make it 5-0 up now, defending wow. Consular. Oh, you did say, Tim, and I'll give it to you. You said, I expect a big team or two to go home. I said one of the big teams will go home today. And it could well turn out. I thought it might boys. be NIP at a point. Oh, Chris yeah. Giving them a real too. game. They did. Uh, and, but, you know, that's the one thing that I think everyone will remember is, oh, you know, APAC teams going out in play and blah, 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 blah. Actually, a really good showing by Crest. Would love to see will. them come back and form again at the next major. However, we're almost ready. Bands are done and dusted. Things are wrapped up. And that means, Tim, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to actually get into the game and see if DZ or Fury will be the last team to secure that spot in phase two. Let's and to start siege. things off, we've got I-9 on the Kavera. I love it. Why not start as you mean to go on? The thing is, honestly, like I say, for Fury here, I feel like there's, you know, very little expectation. They can play with a little freedom. Why not come out and just do something that might surprise Dark Zero. Why not like this? hide in the bathtub and try and cheese around or two? You know, it's those sorts of things that you can easily look at and say, ah, not a chance. But what it is going to do is it's going to test Dark Zero to make sure that they're coming in here. Um, I don't know if a professional mindset is really the right phrase to use, um, you know, but they've got to have that mindset of coming in, being thorough, checking everywhere, doing everything, you know, ticking um, all the boxes, making sure that they're not leaving stones unturned because if they play in like this, there's a real chance that Fury could stun them if they do. I really think Ionai's plan was to, I mean, for the whole of the prep phase, I'm he guessing was in he the probably bathtub. got drawn in the bathtub. Uh, no, he didn't know. Oh, that's why he was staying in the bathtub, was the idea. And then as soon as prep phase the, ended, the he sprinted off downstairs and I think was trying to look for anyone trying to. As you sometimes see teams do, they'll enter in through the garage door because it's soft and work their way up the stairs from there. He was hoping to catch someone, not to be the case here, but every chance that he can work some more magic as we go along. Canadian with eyes on the Valkyrie, holding around here inside of Solar. And that appears to be the main point of ingress, at least for him and a couple of members on his team. Yeah, we're going to have the second drone going in there as well. Again, just trying to feed it. that information. They're going to be looking to get the top floor here, Dark Zero. They are attacking onto kitchen and dining, so they want that verticality. They've got Canadian, they've got Gavani, both with a lot of destruction. Also, Flores on in the hands of Rice as well. Those um, Rateros, of course, can rip up that floor in if used in such a way. But the focus really is going to be get the ram in there, get those little uh, bots rolling across the floor and rip Picking it up like always does manage to pick up Rice, but it's a direct trade as Rice did have the Claymore down. Speaking of Rice, yeah, didn't have the best performance earlier on today against G2. I think he ended up at like 3 and 12 or something crazy. Really want to see him come online in this matchup as well. Oh, I mean, they more need more than just that coming online because Canadian and Gaveni went dark all of a sudden. Two quick kills coming in for Dark and Crit. All of a sudden, there is no vertical destruction available and even Not less it matters. gun power <laughs> available as Dark takes down Pamber. It's all up to NJR. One versus four. Shut down outside of the trophy window. It's going to be BG Man to find that final kill. And this is the danger potentially for Dark Zero already. It looks like Fury are having a lot of fun. There's this laughs. They're happy with the outcome of the round. And Dark Zero need to make sure that they don't get into too much of a comfort zone too quickly. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I mean... A starting point there of gunfights looking hot as well for the side of Fury just shows that this game may be a little bit harder than maybe DZ bargained for. We'll see if they warm into it or not. We did say at the back of the game earlier on, at the end of the day, a team might be a little bit of a low point there. You know, you've got a fight through and the best of three might be a little bit nervous. They've had a chance to sit and watch you all day and really be ready for this game. It can work in reverse where if you haven't played a game on the day, some teams coming a bit cold and it could take them three, four, five rounds to get into it. But for Fury, not the case. The three or four players there have come out. They've hit big shots. They've completely shut Dark Zero down. And that's without the Kavira having even to be involved in that round. Yeah, not at all. Um, it was all about that fight over top floor. Uh, 
Slovenia and Canadian being taken down, and that really was uh, breaking the back of the round. Like all, it's just signalling as well. You know, the intention from Fury to get aggressive, to get out of the map, maybe have a little run out, little jump out, and just try to surprise Dark Zero. As I said, they can play with a freedom here, does they can just take it to them um, and sort of play any kind of style that they want, really. Um, you know, I love Dark Zero that are going to have to react. Dark base to BG men. No, I'm not stopping putting this barricade up for you. Walk around, forcing to rotate through Dark. <laughs> It's like, no, this is the ego that I've got now. Look at me. I just got two kills in that last round, mate. You've got to go around me. Also, I'm sure I'll get many more of those. Yesterday, it was crazy. It was dark, having massive games. Glycolis with a huge clutch at one point. And I know I was quiet in Matt one, but when it came round to Skyscraper, I think we said he single-handedly won about four rounds for his team with some unbelievable clutches. So if you're looking at this team and thinking, ah, oh, I don't know any of them. Oh, no, it's all about Dark Zero. Trust me, don't disrespect Fury. They can be absolutely terrifying when they're on form. Just going to be watching that vertical window through towards library. It's 6-0 to Bliss, by the way. Oh, dear, oh, dear Wolves. Um, we've seen them do this before online, uh, you know, just sort of crumble in those important matches. And it's like it could be a little bit more of the same. So Gavani gets himself inside of the map on the Finca, just looking to move through games. Uh, going to be attacking onto the top floor at this time around. So looking to get that library side secured. Rice keeps sending in the Rotero drones, looking to clear out the utility around Piano. Will get the shield taken down, so that's going to give a little bit of freedom now for Dark Zero to start moving in. But Pamba is going to be taken out by Crit J, who's lurking down there in the basement. And that creates a big problem for Dark Zero now because Crit J, they've got the man advantage. He can stay out there for as long as he wants, really. Really caught them off guard there. Think about earlier on back on Oregon when they were playing against G2 and we had Doki sat at the bottom of Armory Stairs, took out a drone coming in through Double Door. There was someone there immediately ready to pick him off from Armory Window. Whereas here, you've just seen Crit be able to rotate through most of the map, you know, play down through the basement, up West Main, back to rejoin his team. No one's been in a good spot to be able to close and convert onto that. So. For DZ, a little bit of a slower start here, being punished when they're losing out in these gunfights, which again, Fury are really hot on so far in these first two rounds. Yeah, not too bad so far though for no, Dark no, no. Zero. They've got themselves library control, they've got the wall opened up so they can move in uh, potentially towards a plant spot should they get into a position uh, to enable them to do that. So not the end of the world. They do need to find a couple of kills though. 45 seconds left to go and they need to be careful that that slow methodical style doesn't come back to bite them, that they're not leaving it too late at the minute. They're still in there on the drones. They spot them out underneath don't think he's aware so that should be a pickup for dark zero that might just level things up but 30 seconds left to go mm. they need to be careful the thing is for dark zero they've already said like you heard uh, troy talking over comms earlier patience is the name of the game and sure they're happy playing it right up until the end of this one they've got the cover coming in downstairs below that's been jars in a great spot as well to stop the c4 coming out that means this gets stuck fury have just conceded a bit too much room and dark zero have happily stepped in and now it's a post plant for the remaining three members on Fury. That is exactly okay, where I expect to Dark Zero to win rounds and potentially win this game. They were just on another level of thought there. Uh, you know, ultimately Fury thought that they had it locked down with the Nitro from underneath, but no, Dark Zero were a step ahead. They knew exactly what was happening and they even left the kill to the right minute. Like, yeah, we're going to wait until he's putting the diffuser down because what's going to happen? he's going to have the Nitro in the hand. Mm. He's not even going to be in a position to fight back. And it was just perfectly timed from NJR and Dark Zero. Really well played. They get themselves round two. It's going to be 1-1. One, one. No, I said, I said, no, I said, I said blue and I said so is clear. Because I thought there was two down there, right? It's all a discussion around comms. It's nothing like the ordinary. It's something that he said earlier on as well, Troy, when we heard him over, just like you did then over the microphone, he was saying something around, look, we're a team, they're not a team, they're not a team. Really, that round did feel like team play. Although in the early round when they got caught up by Crit, sure, it was very much a freebie given away. That last stage execution was exactly what I was talking about. The ability to have someone below at the same time. The plant is going down and deny it away. The C4 from coming out. Good bit of team play, good bit of coordination. Everyone aligned around the same thing, and it was getting that plant down behind half wall. Now we go down into the base. We've got this mirror on side for Lycolis, and a pretty dug in comp overall, actually, for the side of Fury. I don't think you're going to see too much roaming on this side, Tim. No, I wouldn't expect so. Anine's on the Goyo, um, being one of our usual roamers. Uh, BG Man might get off into the map with Warden 
and we've seen it once or twice so far. Maybe he'll play in dining, um, but maybe not. Could be more useful down in the actual site. It's a bit of a funny one, is this? Um, we haven't really seen this site defended in a, a turtle sense for quite a long time now, generally. Um, so the prevailing strategy, the prevailing technique for defending this site is to get yourself off into the map um, and make teams do a full map clearance. It doesn't look like that's really what Fury are going for. Instead, they've got Dark upstairs inside a dining, but that is pretty much going to be the limit of their Rome game. They've got the EMP on side here as well from Thatcher to make this one all too easy to get opened up. And Canadian feeling a little bit fearful of something here, but there's no nothing to block it away. Nothing to stop this being opened up. Detour's moment, a little panoramic around that one. Thank you very much, observers, to give us that view of the lovely breach now opened up on Garage. They haven't necessarily got to play it. It can be that phantom pressure, but here, everyone else just suddenly hightailed it away from the Garage opening and instead up towards the north side. He could punish this one if he stays put, has now moved away. Canadian's still going to give himself a good go on this one and try and catch his man, but it's simply not going to happen. Yeah, that was a beautiful attempt. Just a little spray through the barricade. You're always just hoping. We saw this actually used. We saw somebody drop this hatch yesterday um, and pick up a double, so definitely right for Gavini to be paying attention to that. Crit J up above as well, just feeding information with that heartbeat scanner. Dark Zero really do need to do something about this mid floor. They can't necessarily go in and get the diffuser down. They're not going to be able to take their eyes away from West Main. They're not going to be able to take their eyes away from that trophy drop. They need to be careful and really the answer is go in there and get those kills. I mean, again, for Dark Zero, you don't always see the plan fully formulating until the latter parts of the round. Crit J wants out of danger here and is getting in the right sort of place. It's Rice who's got the Overwatch on him and hoping to find out exactly where he is and pick him off if he tries to get a little bit cheeky. But as you get in towards that final 45, 30 seconds or so, that's when you'll see everything really start to tie together for Dark Zero. Yeah, we see the track stingers coming out. That's just to try and deal with West Main. Doesn't really address the trophy side just yet. Like always manages to take Two, that three. Make that three as Pamba and NJR just him, and that is going to be a huge advantage now for Fury. It's just time oh, for Dark wow. Zero to try and find kills. This could be flawless, but no. Rice manages to stop that, picking up one Jesus. onto I-9, but that's all he can do. And talk about Fury. That was fast, and it was furious. What a round from Fury. Largely from Lycolis inside a trench as well. Just three players all trying to push him through a single doorway bottleneck. A gun like the Vector is going to love that scenario. You hold down left mouse button. It's the fastest firing gun on the defensive side, and... Well, what can you do except cry? <laughs> All three of them walking in and going down to Lycolis, and he ultimately was the bait for the final one, too. A bit more muted in this game, I think. A little bit more muted this time around. I mean, we knew. Look at this, look, look. Just, that's a beautiful shot in itself, but the next two is they just fly in. One after the other gets both. Incredible. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Like all is happy to eat the nade at the end of things there, but why not? Your job is done. You've pretty much won the round. Um, but yeah, as you say, a little bit more muted on the side of Darks here. I think, you know, they're not against G2. They don't necessarily have that big character on the other side in Alamar who's going to be screaming at them. So, you know, they know that there's a job to be done here. Let's be honest. The stakes were high in the game against G2. The winner going through, but the stakes are much higher here. Lose and you go home, so definitely uh, a sort of a different focus from Dark Zero. I remember the conversation, uh, I think it was about 18 months ago, I had a chat with uh, Troy and was asking, you know, what before back on like SSG, you were screaming every single round, you were super hyped up, yet on Dark Zero, he saw you go real quiet, why is that? And he turned around and said that ultimately the problem with the really high energy is when things aren't going so well and he can't really be like that, it just puts everyone on edge a little bit. If he's screaming even when things aren't going so well, people get a little bit tense, it throws them off their game. And so his view has always been with Dark Zero, stay in the middle. If I can keep the energy middling and everyone is never too low or never too high, we're a lot more consistent in terms of our performance. Today, obviously, we've seen that change a little bit for him. And personally, I like seeing some of that energy to come out, knowing that someone's ready to go ready to go to bat for you, can just get that adrenaline pumping, can get you excited as a team. As long as performance doesn't diminish as a result, I think it can be a good thing, but it feels like he's trying to find that balance around the right time to use it and the right time to be more controlled, more composed, like he is now, when the team really needs to focus and get things back online. Pamba with some quick movement there. Drone goes into library. He follows it in very soon after once he knows that it's clear. Taking out gadgets along his way. I-9 still oh, downstairs. Go. Probably not picked up on the drones because he's not being addressed just yet. Um, so he's just going to hold himself in that position. Certainly, oh no, maybe not. I think they might be aware of him down there. The thing is, if they are aware of the Cavera on the bottom floor, it's really not the end of the world. That's a clever move if they are aware because they can watch the main stairs from there without him necessarily being aware. Yes, he but doesn't come up I-9 has managed to get 
get himself up the library stairs. This could be the moment. I don't think they have any clue whatsoever. He's just got one inside a box. He doesn't know, but he finds him. He's not going to go for it. He does get the kill, though. Crit J with one onto Caverny. Canadian with the trade. Three versus four, though, as I9 oh. doing the damage, but shut down from the window before he could drop the hatch. Somehow, though, Fury managed to keep themselves on top, Des. Into a two versus two with a Monty on the other side. It starts to feel a little bit precarious for Fury. A real flurry of kills coming in at that mid part in the round as, at least for a second, I thought really dragged them ahead, but it wasn't without Dark Zero getting some responses onto the other side at the same time. So it's not unsavable here for Dark Zero, but as long as that diffuser isn't down, they are at a disadvantage. They're down really a primary weapon because it is the Monty that's coming marching on through. So Dark and BG Man, as long as they're playing crossfires here, as long as they can stop the diffuser going down, in my opinion at least, are in a winning position. Yeah, there's a lot on NJR here to be found in some kills uh, I think uh, just looking to clear out some of that utility but it is no hard breach on side so there's no option to change up the layout of the site here Canadian's just gonna have to try and push in through the single door gonna take damage as he does um, and JR really needs from to be well, following with it is exactly that he's just giving the information in BG man will take half health damage but manages to find the kill onto NJR all up to try in this situation cut down by BG Man, and that's going to be a double for him at the end of the round. Fury 3 1, and let's not forget Dark Zero are on the attack here. This is not looking good for them. I mean, <laughs> they give it as good as they get it. They certainly do. <laughs> Love to see it. I think, really, there again, a small mistake coming in in terms of the Mark 14 from the DKB just clipping Canadian as he was holding in the right position. Quick tack timeout coming in here, though, very understandably, needs to be a thing. Yeah, pretty can't hear too much of this no, one, sadly. No, we can't hear too much of this one, unfortunately. But uh, just, yeah, Dark Zero really hitting the pause button there. They know that things are getting away from them. And really, on the attacking half of Chalet, as a minimum, they want the 3-3. Let's not forget, this is their map pick as well. Mm. Um, you know, they're wanting to go in there now. They need to level this up at the half. Uh, they certainly don't want to be behind when Fury come on to the attack. I do think that we will see better out of Dark Zero on the defence, I will be honest. Um, but it just seems to be a little bit of a lack of awareness at the minute. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. Just a constant march on through and I like the disruptive game that we've seen. Like I know for I9 back in round one, you didn't really have to see the Kavira put to any use. His team did the business that needed to. Bless you, by the way, Tim. Whereas in this round here, that's why he suddenly disappeared. A bit of a sneeze. This round here, like, yes, he got much more involved. He got that kill, which was a nice disruption on the top floor. Couldn't convert it into much more than that, but it was enough as a starting point, right? And they are just keeping Dark Zero guessing. And when you're against a team that is quite slow, and I mean, we say slow, Canadian and the team would happily tell you it's about patience. If you can disrupt them early on and really kind of throw their game plan in, throw a wrench, a wrench in the works, that's where you can see things go horribly wrong, as it kind of did in that previous round. Can't pull it together a two versus two when the Monty does not really have a primary weapon to make good yeah, use of. No, exactly that. I, you know, you, I sort of look at Monty sometimes as kind of... Um, it, it depends on your numbers. What I would say is when you've got a full five, Monty's a full operator because he's doing lots of things. He's uh, giving information. He's disrupting. That's what Monty's there to do. He's there to push people around. He's there to create space. Um, and that's what he's doing when you've got a five. But as your numbers deplete, I would also deplete, um, you know, how much of an operator I would see Monty as. And when you're down to a 2v1, he's practically not an operator. It's almost a 1v1 at yeah. that point. Um, he obviously you gives know. you the information and the ability to yeah, plan safer, it, but it's not a gun it, it, it sort of have. goes down from a full operator when you've got a team of five to maybe half an operator when you've got a team of two. Yeah, um, he's not, he's, he's let's just say he's not of, really going to be contributing to any trades. No, exactly <laughs> that. His, his usefulness certainly drops off um, the more players are lost. Um, so being the last alive there, very difficult for Canadians. So 3-1, we find ourselves Fury looking great at the minute. You know, I'm not just going to put it on the fact that um, necessarily Dark Zero are losing a couple of rounds. Fury are going out and winning them. They're getting aggressive. They're taking early gunfights. They're finding kills. Uh, they're being unpredictable. I like what they're doing so far. It's no wonder they've picked up a few rounds. Hmm. I was curious if there were any magnets originally positioned inside of here to help with getting rid of the uh, nades that come heading in towards that shield. And one did come raining straight on over, but as you've seen, they've finally managed to clear it away with the use of the Floros drones. Plenty really of utility they can stay behind here to clear it away. And they've managed to do just that. That's one part of the puzzle solved for them. Not really yet towards opening up site, but remembering last time round, they got the control downstairs inside a lobby. They planted in behind half wall and really... Didn't get it. Did he get... 
I swear he destroyed something, but is it, was it not? It wasn't the, the mute jammer. Um, he was taken out before he yeah. managed to get the mute jammer. Lycolis with an opener again onto Rice. No Claymore to find the trade this time. Pamba does manage to get one onto Crit. Even as now four versus four, but Lycolis has been going well at the beginning of the round. So Fury, it's not really the beginning at the minute, but in terms of the opener, oh at least Gabini <laughs> does manage to find I-9 using that Goyo canister against him with the vertical nade, taking out the mute jammer, but also getting a very nice little bonus. I do really think their I-9 should have had that read on what was coming next. Like, you know the Mute Jammer's there. They've got no other way of getting through it. Fair chance they're going to start nading in from below. And you know there's a nade on side because the nade already cleared this jungle area on the pushing towards Piano. So maybe a little bit inattentive there to what was going on throughout the yeah, round that has paid the price for it. However, Canadian put down, picked back up again by the Finca, and Dark just goes, nope, stay down, my son. Down a second time he goes. Dark in a great spot here to stop this plant going down. They need to remove him first. Yep, like Hollis and Dark both on very low health, though. Is Dark going to get him there on the is. swing? Absolutely not. Pamba able to go in, get aggressive. He could find another here in like Hollis, potentially, but no. BG Man's got his bands back. He's got him on the cover. He manages to pick up Pamba. 17 seconds left to go. Like Hollis comes down with the few hit points that he had. It's all up to BG Man. He's taking the peak. He knows where they're coming from. Out goes the impact. It's not going to do the job. He swings. He fires. He misses. He still keeps searching, seeking. He knows where the cover is. He gets one. Surely he wins this. No. He's the head and misses. Can no. he find his man? No. NJR gets the plant. Gets the kill. Gets the round. Dark Zero. Fight back. It's 2 3. Massive out of NJR there. It really looked for a second like that should have been done and done. But no, massive pull off the back of the diffuser to close things down. Keeps them in the in the conversation. Three and two going to be that scoreline now, rather than a four-one, which would have felt terrifying as a prospect to fight back against as Dark Zero. But here, like said, still in the conversation. Boy, oh boy, uh, big round for Dark Zero there. Uh, Fury again, still not making it easy. No matter what no. they seem to do, Pamba gets himself up into piano, but BG Man there is covering and gets the kill. BG Man, big round for him. And I think maybe even a little bit of frustration. He saw the head of Ivana, he saw NJR. It was one shot, but he just missed it. So difficult sometimes, uh, you know, in those tight situations. You've got a zoomed in scope, you're trying to move around, you just move a little bit too quickly or maybe not enough we'll see it oh, just njr get see the traces going across the top gets away with it um, but that's how it goes at this level of siege gonna be dark zero take the round and what a matchup we've got but i like to see this from fury they lose the round but it's still, still smiles, laughing still laughing <laughs> you know and that, that makes them a difficult team to beat because you're not going to get in their head mentally you sort of see that maybe they've got the opinion of like look we've got dark zero in an elimination match here we win this we go through to phase two uh, you know the they just, there's no pressure on them. That's it. When there's no expectations on you, there is no pressure. Whereas I think for Dark Zero, there's an element of, look, we're Dark Zero, one of the hallmark NA teams. Like, we should be really getting through to the main stage here and breezing past Fury. And Fury making it hard for all. And that pressure will start to mount up. The longer this game goes on, the longer the Fury stay relevant. However, last round of the half here for Fury on the defense. Dark Zero's last chance to crack this head wide open and get a 3-3 split, which would be very welcomed. I'm actually curious, I never really thought about it too much, but they're in a good spot there where they can't obviously zap it from the outside or destroy it from the outside, but as soon as they try and plant on bins, that canister is so yeah. easy to just destroy and deny the bins plant outright. Yep, it's a very nice placement, and it's something that they're definitely going to have to deal with. Uh, we saw this last time, Rash just deploying the track stingers at the top of West Main Stairs. Uh, that's going to prevent that flank coming down, at least for free anyway. There will the minimum be an audio cue of somebody shooting that out to try and move down. Uh, Rice is going to relocate round to the front, uh, potentially looking to use the nades to clear that Goyo canister maybe um, he's just going to strafe across needs to be careful he doesn't overexpose himself and I think yep that's exactly what he's going to be doing Nade in hand should get rid of that Goyo canister the dying to try and get it out it's still there I was going to say really the only option here is to use nades I have to go through two nades just to clear yep, it out but it does probably also telestrate a little bit to the side here on what the intent yeah, is going to exactly be. That. that you know a bin plant is coming in, that they've got a bit of gadgetry to play behind here, mainly looking in towards two more nades. The flash is on hand too. 
So that's where Fury need to be respectful. They've got C4s in back pocket, two of them. They've got impacts to play behind. Still a lot to deny if Dark Zero do go for what looks to be a pretty telegraphed execute. This is not great for Fury, though. Pamba's been able to push up into Electrical Corridor here, so he's got a really good cross going in um, sort of behind Pillar there, and he can just hold down into Connector if he wants to. He's got a shield that he can play behind. He's got that freedom of movement to play on this 90-degree angle. It's a good power position for him, and it might just cut down Fury his ability to move round inside a side, oh, but I tell you what, they're not going to need to move inside. There's a couple of kills come in. Dark with the latest onto Pamba, who trades out the kill that he found onto BG Man 4 versus two Canadians inside a site. Canadians dead. Diffuser is down, and there is no picking him up from that position. Like all this is a little bit wedged inside of Connector, but it doesn't matter because I 9 strafes across, finds the man through the soft wall above the mirror window, and Fury, they close out another. It's a 4 2 defensive half. -way. What a start. Um, just felt like they had so much there prepared on the side of Fury, whether it was the C4 denial from the mirror window onto Bins, whether it was still having one player instead of dining, sat watching the hatch to deny verticals. They had so much going for them that it felt like Dark Zero maybe tried to take too little ground, too little control there. And it led to many, led to many power positions still being online for the side of Fury. But that's a 3-3 half, Tim. 4-2. 4-2 half, sorry. I'm going to say, I make it, I'm looking at my notes thinking about <laughs> I'm sure I make no, this 4-2. 4-2, correct, um, correct. Yeah, Fury, just, like I said, they just look like they're playing without pressure. They're playing completely differently to maybe what we saw against G2 yesterday. Mm. Um, you know, the mistakes seem to have sort of disappeared. The, you know, everything's just going right for them at the minute. Um, and it's uh, it's fantastic to watch. It's an absolute pleasure. This is what I mean, look, Dark yeah, on the hatch just, that's it, it, wasn't, just wasn't an area of the map they took. I think Dark Zero, you know, there are mistakes there. They're just not dealing with, that's twice on basement that we've seen them just not deal with that verticality. They didn't deal with Trophy last time. They haven't dealt with Dining this time. You know, you have to be dealing with that map presence. And this is a reminder once again, twitch.tv forward slash Rainbow Six Bravo. The other series is just getting into its second map, Bliss and Wolves, heading into Night Haven Labs. If Bliss win that map, oh boy, Wolves are going home. That's certainly... Uh... Certainly an unexpected outcome for many, I think, you know, at the beginning of the day yesterday, but Bliss have impressed um, on the whole. You know, they've already beaten Wolves once and they're certainly not making their life any easier now. So we'll see where the Wolves are going to be, that big casualty. But I tell you what, there's, they might not be the only one if this continues. Fury 4-2 on Dark Zero's map pick of Chalet before we go into Clubhouse um, for our second map. And right now, Dark Zero, they're going to have to show us something different on the defence. I, I think we might see it. I think Dark Zero may be um, a bit more comfortable, a bit more confident here on the defence, even though it is shallow. Um, I think we will see better from them, but we're going to yeah. need to. What I will remark is Fury's attacks against G2 yesterday really weren't up to scratch on Consulate, despite Consulate being their favourite map. They were just a little bit slow, a little bit inefficient at times as well. This but like this, if he got that second kill, that would have been mega. But the trade was there. Crit followed I-9 in, and they've managed to make it work, securing a two-for-one fight quite early in the round. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well played there by Fury. I like the aggression. I was going to comment, I-9 not messing about. Usually, it's difficult to get out into that library corridor when you've got a man at the top of blue stairs. But no, they had a plan, and they followed it through to a T. He manages to get two power positions cleared out. Mezzanine and library stairs. That now gives them top floor control. So Fury, with a minute and a half on the clock, they can start working these verticals. They've got the sledge. They can look for those angles. That's exactly what they're going to start doing. I like this from Fury. Looking at our next map we're going into as well, club, it's really not a high prior map at all for the side of Dark Zero. So well, it's anybody's, isn't it? It's one of them. That's, I'm just, I'm nervous for them going into it because Fury just looked quite full of beans going into that map. Dark Zero, absolutely not. BG Man strikes, Gavenny's off the board. We're staring at a 5-2 here, not forgetting again, it's Dark Zero's map pick, Tim. Canadian's going to get taken down by Warcolis. And wow. they are fighting from inside of the connector there. He's going to do absolutely nothing, though. Look, Look at the spirits. <laughs> they are high on the side of Fury. And they are Not starting to there. rattle towards a quick first map win here, potentially. 5-2 now. Hands up who had that on their card for today. You know what I do love about these guys? It's time to tell a little story. Yesterday, we were heading home from after our broadcast, and one of the last games we cast was Fury's game against Knights, where they won. And we actually ended up in the same shuttle home as them. We did. And just how... Very nice, guys. Yeah, really, really lovely guys. Everyone I speak to about I-9, for example, is like, you know what, nicest guy in the world. Like, honestly, I have a chat with him. Really cool guy. But then it was also really nice sitting there watching back clips of their game and their high moments, their plays, their clutches. And they were just all hyping each other up yeah, so gas, much. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it was such a lovely thing to see, like, a team be so, like, 
they still have got that in my eyes, that excitement when you first get into a new game that you enjoy so much. And like even rounds they're losing, they're laughing and smiling and just enjoying the thrill of competition, which is what makes them really it's very easy to love them, I think, in the way that they play and approach Siege and their mentality at the minute. And I'm really hoping they can keep doing well. It's just that constant question of, okay, then when the Dark Zero turn on, though? I think if Fury continue like this, um, as they go, if they get into phase two, say, on the Plus back of this, sick, let's be honest. I think they're going to start <laughs> picking up a lot of neutral fans. You know, we've always got those teams that sort of come through as a bit of a surprise package. And I think Fury could certainly be that. And people will start to get behind them. They will start mm. backing them. Um, you know, and like you said, they absolutely deserve it. They're really nice guys. Um, you know, like you say, just it, uh, on the bus, very wholesome, really, watching all those clips back straight away, wanting to see the big moments, wanting to see the clutches, just sort of high energy, having fun with each other. Um, and it is, it's a pleasure to watch from the outside. So Dark Zero, they are struggling at the minute. Two, five. They're going to take to different side this time it's not going to be games uh, it's going to be kitchen and dining so they're going to be trying to hold on to that top floor again good teamwork from fury though to get that twitch drawn inside not going to be taken out by the laser gate and is able to take down the default cam and just provide a little bit of information as to what's going on in master bedroom Sure, looking in towards the grim, really, from BG Man, though. We spoke about this a couple of times already, but it can be dangerously oppressive with how many charges he's got now and the increased radius, for example. Lots to really help the team on their pusher into the building in here. Really good pushing it in towards the bathroom door, where normally you'll have someone sat playing on that half wall. It could make life a lot easier to get yourself inside the building. They've got the Taz coming in here as well. There's still a softball there, and sure enough, it's going to force them to jet away, and that opens up the rest of the team to go on in. Looking towards the right spot, Nay coming in, knows where his man is. Nay's on top of Rice here. Don't think it'll kill him as he'll get out of the dodge just about in time, but they still know where he is. Another Nay coming in. A C4 coming out. It's to me, to you. It's hot potato between the two teams, Tim. It certainly is, and the topping is there as Crit manages to get Canadian, but there's no two way, kills no come way. back. Surely Rice is over here. Three versus three now as BG Man finds Gavini and gives Fury that advantage once again. What a brawl we've just had on the top floor. I love that use of gadgetry, of utility from both sides. Neither of them able to make it stick for the longest time, but it's Fury that come out on top, and they've still got the sledge there, so they can get those verticals opened up. There's a real opportunity to get a plant down inside of kitchen potentially what i'd really love to see them do from here is to find a pretty narrow window on what they want to try and plant it's like, oh ho, ho, almost found mgr as well but find a pretty narrow angle you want to plant in whether it's kitchen whether it's getting just inside the doorway inside of dining yeah don't try and cover too much off here and sure enough bg man on absolute fire in this round putting himself up to 12 kills inside eight rounds what a game he's having there are only three deaths as well there's 12 and three bg man is absolutely flying he was one of the players we picked up on after the game yesterday i and i managed to find that final headshot to close out the round and that puts Fury onto map point for map one against Dark Zero here and the other thing to remember is this so far has been done in quick fashion as this can only be described as a run over at the minute it is feeling that way Dark Zero questions are going to start being asked you know debating exactly where to play as well because I mean when you're getting slapped on every single site on the map where do you go that's it. There's so few choices for Dark Zero at the minute. It feels like they've kind of tried everything. It feels like they've, you know, they've they've tried a number of different things and just it doesn't really matter. Fury just seem to have the answers at the minute, no mm. matter what they bring. So Fury are locked and loaded. You can just see it on their faces. Look, BG man's just hitting shots for fun. Yes, it's me. It's one of the things to remark is you know they made a change uh, earlier in the summer. A couple of different place faces coming in, trying to add something fresh into the team. And you're really seeing it start to unlock in the performances you've had from a few players, you know, like Olis. A couple of massive clutches, not just on this map, but previous ones. Looking back to the mirror earlier, the 1v2 that he had yesterday on Skyscraper in Barbecue and Kitchen, for example. Dark, amazing game, Crit. The young gunner they picked up earlier this year is taking a bit of time to warm into things, but you can see him starting to get into a groove. And I-9 was quiet in yesterday's first couple of maps, but since then, He's also really got himself more involved in the games as quite an experienced player. In case you aren't 100% aware, I9, formerly known as Napew, may recognize that name from Elevator Vault. 
will be positioned inside of Kitchen for the time being. Then it is a basement uh, site here from Dark Zero, so they're holding that mid floor, just like Fury did. I would expect Fury to have learnt the lessons that they benefited from, which is make sure you go and clear out dining, particularly, um, and also are aware of that trophy hatch drop. Like always, is going to get to work immediately on that main wall. It will be opened up pretty easily well, inside of 45 attacker. seconds, so that's good. We see one Dark Zero player just dropping back to site as well from that mid floor. Oh. I Nine was in a position potentially oh. he's going to try and walk in but you can't do that they're not going to get away with it i think fury may be just getting a little bit overconfident there didn't maybe 100 percent aware there's a player inside a trench or thought he could bypass him but njr is a little bit too ready we're a bit more past the days of three speed ashes just running into sight inside 15 seconds of round start i'm afraid and now dark has got to try and work his way in towards library there's one dug in the back corner there's no nades really to make use of here to force him out so they might just have to abandon library and try and find a different way through by the looks of it a lobby stairs rush might be on the cards tim yeah this is more of that sort of full map hold that i was talking about um from dark zero they just have a presence all over the place and it just makes it very difficult what Dark's going to do here is dump this uh, ram gadget just inside of the window it's going to set off and it's going to make an absolute ton of noise and it might just prevent any sound from exactly what is about to happen which is the rush coming downstairs they're unaware that's one kill can they find more they should know by now toxic babe will slow them down pamba with a kill onto crit j as well dark zero have stood up well to that play but it's straight onto the yokai's and the thing is pretty much all of dark zero are pinned inside of blue here now they haven't got to really burst out of it yet because there's no plant attempt trying to go down they're in a 4v2 they haven't got to do anything too crazy really eyes here turn towards bg man and those two shields that he's got in back pocket can he make them work just trying to find that echo hey, drop will that take it down but canadian is in a position to do something about this don't think he knows exactly where the man is he's going to have to go over the balcony or down the stairs realistically for the time being he's going to keep himself inside a library drop the hatch instead canadian could be a real round changer bg man is in a difficult position for dark zero because he's cutting off a lot of rotates there um, a lot of movement is going to be difficult for them now if they want to get into that wine side they don't really have a choice but to go through his line of sight no pressure on the other side because Pamba can see everything though. He knows if a plant attempt is coming in. So Fury, I think they've left it a little bit too late here to try and make anything happen. All three of them are back up, but they've got to get some kills off the back of this one. Dart's getting himself inside. There's a C4 in Rice's back pocket that could do some work. Brings down Dart like Otis is in, trying to make a plant happen, just about gets onto it. But BG Man had to win that firefight. It's not going to happen. NJR with two quick kills at the very end there to give the round to Dark Zero. Yeah, good patience from Dark Zero there. Like you said, they were pinned back in Blue Corridor for the longest time, and they didn't panic. They just waited for their moment. They knew that they had the info that they needed from the Yorkai drones. They could just shoot through the bins to try and take out the planter should that attempt come in. It worked perfectly, like always unable to get that down, and it was an easy mop-up for NJR at the end. So a better round from Dark Zero. They need to keep that going, though. That's got to be the building block. That's got to be the foundation. They don't have any mistakes left. It's still 6-3. There are still three opportunities for Fury to get this done. Whew. All right. Bit of a lifeline for Dark Zero to still stay part of this game, still in the competition. Best way I can describe it. A few replays here to see how it started out. Really, as we commented, I9 trying to be more opportunistic, a little bit of a chance I feel in that round and pay the price to NJR. And outside of that, Dark Zero just made blue their absolute fortress, sat in there behind the Yokai camp to speed all the info they needed and didn't panic, didn't rush. Just let things follow their natural order until Fury were forced to make a move based on time that was less than ideal for them. We're going to head in to round 10 now then. 6-3, we find ourselves to Fury. Don't adjust your sets or whatever yeah, you're yeah, watching this on that score line yeah. is correct. Fury going fantastically well so far. And I tell you what, they're looking very worth every single one of those six rounds that they've won. They've been a pleasure to watch so far, especially BG Man, 13 and four, going absolutely wild and a real thorn in the side of Dark Zero at the minute. But Dark Zero do manage to get themselves a tough round back when the backs were to the wall. They've got to continue that now, though. They've got to get themselves more into this game. You feel like if they can start applying the pressure, I always feel like if this goes to overtime and Fury start, you know, knowing that they're in a battle, then maybe Dark Zero will get that win because the experience will start to, to come clear and it will start to prove its worth. But for me, like I said, the quicker Fury can win, the better for them. Completely agree. Still, three rounds is a lot to climb back up. It is. At least easier still in spirits, though. You know, chasing downstairs, for example, trying to challenge on towards the garage door. 
Giveni. Last time around, they didn't have any nades to deal with the player sat in this position. They've got Dark on side here playing on the sledge, who does have it. So Giveni's got to be careful. He is sat, of course, playing on the Jaeger. Tons of ADSs, which means we'll need to see some of those flashes also committed in towards him. And that's assuming Giveni just doesn't try and get out of there before it really starts to heat up. They are just going to be in behind the bar inside of sight at the minute. We've seen him play in that sort of uh, informational role quite a lot. The bulletproof cameras, something that uh, Dark Zero used quite heavily against G2 as well. And I think just looking to take advantage of that same information game against Fury here. They've done the same with the Yorkai drones like Hollis, however, does pick up Rice. Let's not forget, they only need one round here, Fury. That allows them to now start moving across that top floor. They've got the Sledge, they've got the Rotero drones, they've got the they can open up plenty of the verticals here. Dark Zero, they're holding on. One minute left to go. Back to the wall, Des. They've got to win this round. Gavani at least made the right choice in getting out and getting back onto site there. As soon as Rice went down, he was gone. Did not want to stay there without support and isolated. So good, at least, for recognition of the state of play on his side of things. Four players still alive, though, is not an impossible task. No, they're no. just pretty flat out of utility. No C4 to stack in behind. Sure, three smokes in the back pocket to play with. If Fury haven't yet started shooting through those, but lots of opportunity here, I feel, for the attack inside of Fury to choose where this execute happens as they are in full control of the map, except for Canadian, who's playing out towards dining. Canadian's in a great spot there. He could really spoil the party because they're likely to push down those stairs at some point. They're likely to go over that balcony. You feel BG man, he's going to go down and look to challenge on the library stairs. Does manage to find his kill onto Pamba. That could be a real big point. I'm not sure if Dark knew that that hatch was up and he's going to drop away and have to come back upstairs. Gaveni is shut down and there Got comes it. the kills. It's a quick double from I-9, a kill from BG Man. Canadian proves ineffectual off in dining and Fury, they take map one and they stun Dark Zero in this best of three elimination match. There needs to be some serious conversations going on for Dark Zero in this brief break that they've got between this map and Clubhouse because that was their map. Yet it looks like they've been run over on home turf essentially here, which is a little bit of a struggle. Tim, I really hope we see them fight back. We know Dark Zero are capable of so much more, but Fury, they're one map away from making it out and not forgetting Tim. I'm pretty sure if they make it to Swiss, they also make it to SI. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, so much on the line for all of these teams in every single matchup. But as you say, Dark Zero, we've sort of expected more from them so far, but that was a really quiet performance on Chalet. Absolutely beautiful. Well, let's turn out to the V stream for a short time whilst these guys have a quick break, but back with you in five minutes for the next map. To get to work on this vertical game, this information. Thank you, Jackal. I'll take that very much, but Shinka says, get out of town. I'm not done yet. 2v3 and still a shot for Wolves. Really good stuff there from the final two players of Wolves, knowing that in the man desperate they need to get aggressive, and that's exactly what Shinka does, but he gets taken down. It's Wettables to clear him out, and it's Bibu all alone in the one on three. Everything to do, but a damage with this diffuser will likely go down for fish. And Brendo will cover handily. Finally, Bliss. They've stemmed the bleeding and they've found their very first round of Nighthaven. Great conviction from Bliss to actually dedicate themselves to the full map clear. Send Brendo in on the Jackal and make him do the dirty work. And that's what they needed to do, especially in the defense that Wolves had brought to them. There was no way they were getting that assembly wall open. That's all I'm saying. And even if they tried to work Animus after that, they probably would have wasted, what, like pretty much all the round trying to achieve that. So I think making the call early on from Fisher Guy, the IGL to dedicate themselves to the roam clear. They played that really well with the vertical to dislodge players inside of the hallways, force them to fall off, and then and then able to convert that down into the basement. It was just so good from Team Bliss. Uh, it was a bit scary, I admit, Mandy. In that mid-round, a lot of missed roamers, a lot of missed rotations. Oh, yeah. They did get it at the end of it for Bliss, and now they've taken their tactical timeout. I have information from our producer. They actually called this tact timeout before the round was over. As soon as they lost that player to Shinka through the vertical game, that was when Mingoran said, okay, tack time out at the end of this round. Win or lose, tack time out at the end of this round. And Oda is incredibly vocal here. See him on the left-hand side. I'm sure he's had a lot to say to the roster as Bliss get ready to try and re-attempt on this attack. It was Oda and Wettables there doing a lot of talking back and forth in that tactical timer. It doesn't make me wonder Attackers what they've been saying. Game. Oda actually having a pretty quiet tournament in general so far in Atlanta. It's really been his teammates that have stepped up to the plate instead. But, but now that he has uh, fallen back 
um, away from that supporting role into a more frag or lurk heavy role. Oda's in a really tough spot. Right. Uh, Oda more than anyone has had to change his role from stage exactly. one, where he was the best player in O's and in his regional league, the highest rated player in the world. Yeah. Uh, and now in stage two, he's struggling to deliver. He's still been pretty good but it's a completely different role, as you said. Yeah, the, the, the position that Oda's put himself in on the lurk is one that he often finds himself in these really unfavorable gunfights, right? Oda's the player that has to drone himself in and will often be in those positions in like two on one gunfights, that type of thing. Like there are two people looking at him and he just has to sit there and wait. That's his job. He's just taking the attention away from uh, Wolves to let the rest of his team have the space to do what he needs to do. And that's what's making his performance really tricky to land, right? It's probably why he has so many choice words for the team. He's like, guys, help. <laughs> Very true. The Wolves might be leading here that Bliss have finally had their first sight of relief in this map. Now, if you don't want to hear any spoilers for the A stream, close your ears right now, because I'm about to tell you. It's been a good day for APAC. Fury have won the first map of their game against Dark Zero. Bliss have won their first map against Wolves. And both now are just a single map away from making it to the Swiss phase. Oh, exciting. Imagine if we <laughs> Possible. Already eight, two APAC teams have qualified to phase two. We'll see if we can get two more. Exciting, exciting times now. As we've been ticking away, parts of the round have gone down. They've doubled down on trying to get that IT will open. Not only did they have the mini EMPs Attila, and Fisher guy, but they even had Brendo go in and hack one of those electro claws to make sure that wall would be open nice and easy. Now, last time that Bliss tried to attack this bomb site, they really struggled to get the IT wall open. In fact, I believe that they didn't do it at all, but this time they've done it to great success. Yeah, quite a contrast, isn't it? We also have Fisho back on the Monty now. Wolves banned it on map one. And we saw Space Station ban it against Bliss as well. What is Fish going to be able to achieve with this? Now, he can make his way up Garage. He was checking for a Fenrir device there. Nothing to be seen. Now, Deadshot is on this Solus. The first time we've seen <laughs> Solus' game. And hang on a second. There's a Monty <laughs> walking up the Garage stairs. What are we to do about that? Yeah, Deadshot's just realized, Ooh, I've just let someone walk past my line of sight. Not like he could shoot Fisher Guy anyway, but now Fisher Guy is in the top of rafters, giving all the info to his team. And oh, look at that. Wedderballs can actually capitalize off the back of the Monty pressure coming on through to take down Mowgli. That's a devilish angle on the upside down rappel. And now Brendo, thanks to that mirror window being knifed by the Montane, can hold this tight angle. And Shinka is forced back into a really uncomfortable position. Tough spot though for Wolves, to, uh, sorry, for Bliss to actually convert it from here. What are they going to do about the mirrors? They don't have range hard breach this time around. Wettables was the only hard breach on Thermite. Fisher guys switched out to the Monty. So they have to rely on the Monty as the crutch to funnel the way onto the bomb site. And Fisher guys are actually going to flip his take completely wow. and go over to the blue stairs. Ironically, Deadshot has done the same. On his roam, he's rotated from being near the garage to being near the bottom of these blue stairs. He has been spotted, however, on a drone, and Oda's coming around the corner. Does he have the information? He's in the perfect position. Deadshot knows about it, but doesn't land the critical hit. And now, Bliss spring into action. P4, the last man standing. Let's see if you can make magic with this MPX, mate. One versus three. Like we're into the witching hour a little bit here, Tim. We've got Fury winning in this game 1 0. We've got Bliss winning against Wolves 1 and 0. You called it earlier on today. We could have one or two big teams going home, and for Dark Zero and Wolves, it's looking a little bit trepidatious at the moment. 
Yeah, it certainly is. Um, there's always upsets in phase one, or at least almost always. Um, and there is some uh, some real threats hanging around at the minute of, uh, you know, like you say, teams that we would have expected maybe to qualify automatically, let alone be in phase one, let alone not get through to phase two that could be going home after day two. We will have four more gone by the end of the day. We've got our match summary then from map one. And we see there that Fury took the map 7-3, just EG, a man. lot of action on the left-hand side of that, showing one, three, four, six, seven, eight. You know, really stacking rounds up. It shows how they accelerated through. They won one, they won two, they won three. Just really picked up the pace as they went. Nine entry kills being won in a 10-round game by Fury as well. That is domination of, of epic proportions that you don't really often see in tier one play, but they absolutely destroyed Dark Zero in that respect. I guess it more than just that as well. They've won Dark Zero's map. The next one we're going into, a bit of an old classic clubhouse going to be stepping up next. For both of these teams, interestingly, they haven't played it since the start of September. It stayed very hidden away. And interestingly, it's quite a low preference map for both teams ban based on their banning order as well. But the sheer fact that Fury have opted now to bring it out, that to me just screams the Hail Mary. We've been saving this map. We're bringing it out now because it's quite literally now or never. They could really surprise Dark Zero going into this map and 2 0 this series. What makes me laugh is yeah, we have someone working behind the curtain here, a sound guy helping us out. And he's like, What's your expectation for this game? And we're like, Ah, oh, 2 0, it's done and dusted. We kind of said it might be for Dark Zero. We're looking <laughs> very, very wrong, Tim. Could be wrong indeed. I just, I've got to comment on how many of these highlights were BG Man. I think <laughs> it's about 80% of those highlights were BG Man's kills. It was absolutely crazy game from him. We saw on the stats as well, clear away at the top, 90% cost for anybody who's not aware um, of what cost is. It stands for kills, objectives, survive and trade. So anytime that you get one of those things in a round, you get a point essentially. So he got one of those things at least in 90% of the rounds, either getting a kill, playing the objective, surviving the round, or his death was traded. So it just shows that sort of team contribution. Um, and at 90%, absolutely crazy figures from BG, man. Really, really good performance. And even those that weren't necessarily hard at the score, but I thought had a few good rounds as well, like Colis, massive 3K down inside a trench. We had Dart picking up the odd yeah. kill here or there, mid-round as well. Yeah, I-9 was quiet, but it did take him until the second map in the best of three yesterday to really come online. Still had a few moments, and though, he did, where he, he picked did. up rounds. He did, he did. And it yeah. could very well be the case going into map two where he just simply unlocks and becomes an absolute beast. So a bit nervous for Dark Zero on their side. Gaveni played really well earlier against G2, was pretty invisible on that previous map, though. I'll tell you what, if it carries on as it did, we might just find ourselves on the bus with a winning fury once again tonight, Des. <laughs> on the bus with them once more. I'd absolutely love that. Just a reminder, Tim, come on to my box. Come on. I got Thank you very much. There we go. Just a reminder, that is our veto. That's what we've gone through so far. Chalet, Dark Zero's map pick. Fury won it. Now we're going into club, and if we require it, Oregon, map three. That's going to be the decider between these two teams. I, I tell you what, I think there's still a bit of me that has to think that we're going to get to Oregon. I, I can't imagine Dark Zero sort of limping out of the tournament with such a quiet performance, which is what that was realistically um, on Chalet. So I sort of feel like, yes, we'll probably see some Oregon, but at the same time, I might... You know what? I just don't know with this Fury side. They were so on top. As I say, the pace picked up. They won one round. Dark Zero got one. They won two rounds. Dark Zero got one. They won three rounds before Dark Zero got one. And yep. they were just constantly... It's like they got on top of them and then they just kept pummeling them. Um, and that's a dangerous team to go against. That's why on Dark Zero's side, though, I want to see more of these players getting into the game. You know, where's the massive power performance? The huge give any slam down that we had earlier today. Not seeing that from either of those two players yet. And to be fair, it's not just on them. It's a whole team effort here to get themselves back into things. But it has to happen going into club. No more excuses anymore. You lose this one. You're going out and playing for a major in your own country. That is going to sting. Game is ready. Clubhouse is next up. Let's get into it, Tim, with our fly through. Very excited for this one. This could be our last map of the play-ins, though. Yeah, I mean, looking at Dark Zero, I think one of the keys to them winning on Clubhouse here, um, for me, versus what they did on Shower, is going to be controlling the map a little bit better. Um, you know, we saw how many times did we see Fury come and just be able to, say, take top floor control, yep. take over library, take library stairs, and then yep. start pressuring them directly on sight and finding kills. So for me, Dark Zero have to control the map a little bit better. They have to stand up. They have to win those gunfights. They have to make Fury pay for every inch they take on the attack here. And just in case you're wondering about how the other game is going, in case you are very firmly locked into Dark Zero versus Fury, 
currently 4-2 to Wolves. They've just finished their defensive half on Nighthaven Labs. Now they're going on to the attacking side, so that game doesn't really feel like a foregone conclusion either. It could be a 2-0 to Bliss if Wolves can't hold on to that lead. Let's get into these bands then. Dockerby is going to be the first one. A sky rocketing ban rate here at the Major. Um, you know, we've always seen the occasional Dockerby ban, but that uh, universal impact of being able to call the phones, cut down the roamers, is something that yeah. nobody wants to be going up against. So we see Ying going as well. And then in will come our defenders, which is where it gets really tasty in the banning at the minute. So this will go, and then you've got a wide choice. Fenrir, Mira, Valkyrie. Azami, Kaid, there's so many options for this final pick. Yeah, I think the KB and Ying is probably the most common pairing we've had so far at the Major. The rational I've always gave into it is the KB is just so oppressive when it comes to hunting down roamers and really boxing the defenders back in towards sight. And Ying is perfect for hitting a site with the candelas, the smokes that she brings, the flexibility to step across to hard breach gadgets if required to her being taken offline is a very reasonable ban. Those last two though, it is the Azami alongside the Solis. I don't really feel like droning was a big issue too much in that last game for either side, but here it's just going to really crimp things down even further. That makes me nervous for Dark Zero on the basis that their game is very structured, it's very patient, it's very info-reliant. If Fury can shut that down, or would have been able to with the Solus on side, it could have been having a very, very different conversation. But here at least Dark Zero should feel pretty comfortable coming into the attacking half when we get there. To begin with, they start on the defense. There is this mirror on side. They're locked and ready, and Fury are going to have to start off by attacking into the base, but that can be quite a battle, as it is quite a fortress of a side. So I spoke about the freedom that Fury were able to play with coming in here, sort of, you know, maybe without too many expectations upon them. Obviously, the favourites, you know, heavily being Dark Zero, if we, you know, if we look at the reality of the situation. But in map one, I think that's absolutely true. You now get to map two, and there's going to be a different situation for Fury to manage. And it's whether they can continue playing with that freedom or whether the pressure starts to mount. Because in map one, you're up against Dark Zero, you're thinking, yeah, but let's just see what we can get. In map two, when you're one up, you start thinking, we could do this. Mm. We could get through to phase two. We could guarantee SI. This is huge. And those thoughts will inevitably start creeping in. So it's then how the players manage that. Uh, um, so that's going to be another factor to keep an eye on as well. I was going to say, NG, I missed that drone for a long time. And my God, is it lucky he chose to move when he did because <laughs> I9 was mates. hot on his tail trying to catch him out before he managed to get back to sight. But we'll keep himself alive and out of danger. Just looking for that top floor clearance. Uh, we've got four at least of Dark Zero, and the fifth is out there in dirt. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Observer. Um, I'm not I sure believe we have... I, I want to say it's medics for, for these last two. We had easy for the first one. It is medics. It is See, I know it's medics. medics. I don't know when it's medics. What can I say? Um, so, uh, yes. Uh, we've got <laughs> you all know how I know when it's medics? If there's an Iana in the game, he is the Observer that likes to troll us, because you know the animation of when yeah, the gadget he, He's got on. it timed absolutely He just clicks perfectly. away perfectly, and I'm just like, what, what's just happened? I'm like, oh, it's medics. It's, it's like a movie level transition. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful when he gets it. He has got um, it down. But, uh, yeah, so... Dark Zero are just playing this turtled down in the basement. You know, as I said, they need to make sure that they control in the map. They need to make sure that they, uh, you know, punish in fury for every inch that they take. And already they've sort of chosen not to do that. I'm not saying it's not going to work, but by turtling, they are giving fury everything. And don't seem too bothered about it because they can dig in behind the shields, in behind the mirror windows, in behind the C4s and everything else they might possibly need. But this is a great nade coming down, immediately caught out by the ADS. If there was no ADS, that would be a very, very dead gap. Certainly would. He's going to have to play around those track stingers. They should be able to clear them out if they wish to. Uh, there is a drone there as well, going to be taken down. Good teamwork, pinged out and picked up. It's going to be Pamba, who is playing out inside behind the generator. Mm. So at the minute, Fury have got a little bit of a difficulty. Dark Zero have recognised where they're coming from, and they've stacked numbers on that side. They are ready for that push down blue. Um, and that's all that Fury have got. Uh, There's, I, I always mean, like to see, uh, you know, options. They've got a couple up on hatches. There comes the drop from Lycolis. He's going to find that very difficult if he takes him down it's going to be as easy as that but here goes dark he manages to get a trade shut down dark zero are pretty ready for this but crit j's got himself I mean, inside a side and i9's got a 2k as well one more to find at the back as well just in behind the shell being tucked in quite nicely here as well crit really needs to find his man there's only two left canadian down super low it's the player in behind the shield that's going to be the frustration baits him out but loses it out i9 has got a net of 4k and he's found the third tim just njr to bring down and they know exactly where he is that's it he knows that he's going to be on one of the sides of these boxes. The mirror window has been punched out, so he can play in from that direction if he wishes to. He changes to it up, and he's going to head through, but with eight seconds, he's going to have to take this fight. Oh, I-9! I-9 closes it out! He knows what he's done! That's 
round one fury. What were we saying coming in between it? I know in quiet first map and yesterday it was map two where he really came online and literally in round one, he walks a 4K, beautiful stuff. And I love the alignment we saw coming out of fury. I won't lie, I was a bit worried at first. They were dropping nades into ADSs whilst there were two players with three flashbangs each sat in back pocket. And I was like, boys, these nades could be getting your kills or shields or anything, but you're throwing nades into ADSs. What is going on? But when the drop comes in and you've got all five players mobilizing at exactly the same time, even Dark Zero can't keep up with the chaos of everything happening all around the, the basement all at once. Really good stuff by Fury, great aggression. Now we're going to move up towards Cash and CC. If you remember, I said coming into this, one of the keys for Dark Zero is map control, is not allowing Fury to take that space and to use it with a man advantage. They've shown us on Shallow that they're capable of doing it and capable of winning rounds when they get in those positions. Round one of Clubhouse, we give them the entire map, we turtle up downstairs and look what Fury do with it. It. They get themselves positioned really well. They push from multiple angles at the same time and they make Dark Zero's life very difficult because of it. You know, Dark Zero, had they been out in the map, had they got a couple of kills, you know, if Fury are pushing with three players at the end of the round, they can't do what they've just done mm. in that same way. So, again, I want to see Dark Zero just a little bit more active. Well, this is looking like a catwalk take with the monster marching his is. way forwards. You know, Lone Legion on side to stop this one. Sure, they've got the smokes and a couple of C4s, but that really is about it. By the way, this is a heads up. It is 4-4 between Bliss and Wolves. I did say that 4-2 lead with, with uh, Wolves moving onto the attacking side. Looks a little bit precarious. And sure enough, Bliss are dragging it back. And there's a lot of Aussie fans in the chat cheering them on. Gaverny just looking Whoops. to try and use those impact nades. He's coming under heavy fire oh, here. What do you do? Taken down. Everything stacked against him. The Capitao Fireball. The Monty Shield. That is going to be the catwalk taken. Uh, hard breach options. They've got the Thermite on side with Lycolis. So he's no doubt going to try to get that CCTV wall open. And once he does, that's exactly what he's doing now. I that is to... going to give them everything they need to get a plant there. I need to know where were there were my magnets there from Gaverny as well, because everything was flying at him. You know, they've gone through no flashes or smokes on their side, but it's still just plugged all the way through. Now Lycolis is in, plants going down, He's smoke comes it. out, he'll stick it the whole way through. Oh, nice and close. It was so close to being complete, but Rice has got up there and done the damage that he needed to, and now they'll be on with a bit of a panic watch, I think, being mindful that they very nearly got caught completely off guard there by Fury. They did. Uh, Lycolis made the right decision. I think he would have stuck it through the smoke. Right, it was a yeah. smart play from Rice, though, to know that might happen and to step up and take the shots that were needed. Crit Day does manage to find that kill. Four versus three. Canadian underneath Nitro in hand, so they need to be aware of that if they're going to go for another plant there. We see it. And oh JR dear. takes down 9-9. Diffuser is not in hand. It's down cold at the minute. Yeah. Three versus three. Dark. He needs to start finding some kills. Somebody needs to move in here. They've got Firebolt. They've got smokes. They've got, you know, two, two smokes and a smoke bolt to play with. They've got so much gadgetry they can work with. And I really thought they'd plant Monty on the doorway in between sites and have someone planted behind the server stack. So again, Small errors being made by Fury, but they've still got every chance to win this round. Rounding for the Echo, but that's Supernova. Backs a super punch straight into his skull. Down goes Crit J1, equalized out the other way. So they are finding these Again, trades. Now in a two versus either. two, they've got to make this plant work, but look who's below. It's Canadian with a C4, who should take this one away. Down goes BG Man. Dart's got it all to do with 35 seconds to play. Yep, they've never dealt with that threat from underneath here, Fury, and that has been a big problem for them. Pamba drops away, because guess what? He's got in pocket a nitro so he's just gonna play from underneath he's gonna get a double nice and easy if he triggers this one the throw we went go. out there's the kill better from dark zero and the big difference is there's they didn't turtle up they kept some map control they had canadian underneath they were able to deny the plant much better from dark zero it's really good denial play the one thing i think that have been overlooked by Fury there was yeah, the downstairs they didn't, denial. They didn't take the no. ground downstairs. If you're ever going to take it, so if you're playing in your ranked games and you're thinking, how do I get a plant down in CCTV? It is as simple as take catwalk, open CCTV wall, and have somebody down in lounge. At that point, it should be almost impossible for defenders to stay. It basically, if you don't get the plant down with those three things, you've made a mistake, almost certainly, because there's no real way to threaten you from that point. But Fury missed one of those big three, and they allowed Canadian to stay downstairs.
it was when they rotated three players over towards playing on CC Breach that I was a little bit like, oh, guys, like, surely you leave one. You know, you've you got three players that have taken Garage. You can do whatever you want from there. You can watch Red Stairs, which would deny that whole play from happening. But instead, they all went over to try and play platform. And again, it's it's small yeah, errors that are costing Fury moments in these rounds. I think it's not like losing the rounds all over the place. Sure, Five it's only one-on-one -on -one so far, and maybe it will cost them more as the game goes by. But just tightening up the screws in certain yeah, areas, I think, is really key the for them to get ahead here on the attack in half. I honestly think Rice wins the round there, to be honest. Um, oh, stopping Lycolis. They were yeah, doomed otherwise. They, exactly that. Lycolis was firm in that plant, and he knew that he could get away with it. He knew that he would survive, and Rice stepped up and did what needed to be done. 5-4 mm, to Wolves, by the way. I am keeping tabs of both games here, because both of them are very exciting and could equally see big teams going home. So I feel that both are worth monitoring. Again, a reminder, if you want to watch that game as well, you can watch it on twitch.tv forward slash Rainbow Six Bravo. But here on the mainstream, it is Dark Zero just versus Fury, in case you are only just joining us. Here, trying to work their way in through the bar hatch. You need the EMPs to come over to help out with this one, of which they have none. So that will, <laughs> that is very much staying electrified. And it feels like a bit of an oversight to not have some kind of anti-electrification gadget to bring along here. I'm just looking to see exactly where all the Dark Zero players are and whether they've got anybody out on the roam this time or whether, again, they're going to give Fury that space and time to allow them to set up their attack. I feel like last time they did better when they had players out in the map. All five of them are downstairs this time. So, again, Dark Zero giving Fury a lot of space. It hasn't taken Fury too much time to realise that's the case. They're already looking to get themselves in towards blue. They know that everybody's inside a site. So now Fury have got about a minute, a minute and 15 to just build their attack to just wait get everything in place and then it's at three two one immediate key difference there is the nade coming in onto the barbed wire that slowed down dark when he drops into oil previously so he couldn't really join in to support bg man or whichever player it was that was pushing in from blue stairs so they are adapting they are realizing the things that have slowed them down previously and are making changes for that but like dark zero it's a game of patience when it comes around to their setup they're not trying to blitz in towards site halfway into the round instead really getting themselves set up comfortably and then looking for a big hit any on the warden this time, just looking to make it difficult for them to push down there, taking out the track stingers as well, just peeking out from behind. Um, so a little bit of a shift up to personnel down um, in just where everybody's positioned. I think I'm right in saying it was either Pamazu or NJR who was playing in behind the generator last time around. Critcher, he's on a creep down here. Doesn't uh, he doesn't find his man. He's just going to pre-fire around the corner, but it really signals his presence there. And mm. with 45 seconds left to go, you just feel this attack doesn't quite have the same teeth that it did last time. I was going to say, it's coming up against Canadian with a silence TCSG switches to the pistol but taken down i9 two kills can't slow him down this map six and one he stands at so far a 2v2 ensues this game these teams these rounds are just so bloody close like always is up on the hatch he has diffuser in hand i'm not sure he knows where the last is a ping goes the ping out on it, yeah. he's going to tell him i9 moves into sight there's an opportunity to potentially put the diffuser down here if i9 can go. cover but he's got like always for the time being he's looking for kills like you say time is running yeah, down 10 me. seconds and they're just getting themselves sort of crossed over each other I think not too sure exactly of the positions of these remaining yeah, defenders. I now misses his shots. It's all up to I call this. He downs one. Can he find the second? He knows where he is. No. He's a ringer on the run. There's no. It's going to be Dark Zero to pick it up this time. They managed to get themselves the second round. It's 2 1. Okay. Wolves are on match point. Six and four. <laughs> Cheers, Dev. <laughs> Jesus, I thought it might have been the players in our game going nuts for a second, then we cut to them, they're all in silence. And no, it turns out it's the other players all going absolutely bananas. But again, another pretty close round in that 2v2 for a second, really thought we might see them do it. But that 1v1 was, well, everything. They got the down onto one, and it really came down to the final spin around that won it out for Dark Zero in the end. Close affairs, though, two and one. First three rounds are done and dusted. We go again on those on the same two sides, so I imagine we'll see ourselves maybe go back up to, well, no, it'll be an offside this time round we'll have to step into. So curious to see where DZ choose to go, how they play it out. Time will tell. Big round from Rice there again. That's Huge two round. round. For me, two rounds in a row that Rice has won. Um, stepping up and preventing the like always plant in CCTV was the difference maker, and it allowed Canadian then to finish it off from below. Um, without them doing that, Canadian's not able to have that impact. And then there with a big double, I-9 just missing his shots on Rice, I think. Um, you know, if he wins that one, it goes a completely different way. So Rice doing fantastically well. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was, I'm right in saying it was 1v1 at the end. Like, always yeah. already downed one. So it was.
was an essential win um, for Rice there. So Dark Zero, I, for me in those last two rounds, have just felt a little bit different. I, I don't know whether they've sort of switched on, whether they've sat up straight, you know, what's gone on, but they just feel a little bit different. And I think we might start to see them gain some momentum unless Fury can do something about it. I think a big part of this the second round is going to be the patience shown by Dark Zero. At what point do they concede control of the extended hold out towards Cash and CC? And probably even more importantly, can Fury punish them for playing out on the extended hold? Probably want to try and get someone that can cut things in half here. You haven't got an Azami, for example, so keeping construction closed up or at least blocked off with keeper barriers is simply not going to be an option, which makes that retreat back to site a little bit harder if someone is posted on the construction window. So keep an eye on Fury here and where it is they opt to play. Going to be uh, with Rice inside a shower. Notice, uh, not too much of a surprise there. He's going to be playing the mirror window onto the breach, of course. Um, just watching the cams for the time being. Looks like Fury are going to be looking to mount up and move over from the east side. BG Man's taken some damage along the way as well, down to about half health. Uh, he's just going to be working from the rooftop for the time being. I think, you know, we're still in that phase um, of them trying to get themselves established inside of the map here. Canadians just lurking underneath by the looks of things once again. Um, on the mute, I would imagine that he's got nine in hand. Um, so again, just a threat that they need to be aware of. I'm pretty sure they've seen him on a drone, so they know that he's down there. Pamba, by the way, I think once they start, once he kind of felt the heat kicking up, once the uh, west window inside of cash floor, inside CC, sorry, was taken out, he just backed away in towards site and really didn't let that cutoff exist coming in from construction. Now, a changeover from the other side for Fury. They've started out towards the east and opened up that wall. Now they've moved things over and they're going to open up Jacuzzi wall as well. And that'll really be all that is required of Lycolis in terms of his hard breaching roles in this round. The rest of it then is purely trying to get that plant down. R90 takes a lot of damage from Canadian there inside a stock before he drops away into basement. And again, this is what I like to see from Dark Zero. They're not allowing Fury to have control. They're keeping them guessing. They're keeping them on their toes. Um, and that's going to be difficult for Fury to deal with. So Canadian being out on the roam is just that question mark for them. And he's going to make life very difficult. BG Man spots one in the side. But I tell you what, it doesn't matter. NJR just slides his way out, picks the headshot and moves back to safety. Beautiful play from NJR. Not losing that one, is he now? Obviously, he's got firebolt, smoke bolts to play with tons that he can commit towards sites here as well and use it for his push in. Imagine you'll see one of them coming out in a second. There we go. Smoke coming out first. Fire probably to follow as well, just to block everything out. Stop the mirror going in for a swing. And that should be their ability to go pushing on fours. Dark has also come in from the backside and found one for himself. Yeah, much better there. NJR was dealt with He's really well. Crit J knows where he is. Manages to find Rice. Four versus three straight on into sight. They're not messing about. They've got a lot of control here. It could come down to a Canadian Nitro from below once again. Like all this is thinking about the plans. The He's going to get up on the bed. Should be safe up there. They just need to make sure they've got the cover. Nitro comes out, but kill after kill after kill goes in the direction of Fury. Pamba moves in. Manages to get one. Time is ticking. They have to stick this plant. There is no two ways. Pamba finds another but shut down in an essential kill from Dark as Fury level things up 2-2. Two, two. You'd be terrified if they lost out in a four versus one. Pamba, at least with a couple coming over, though, did make a bit of an effort of it. Gave Fury something to think about. Two and two, Tim. Nice and even between them both. Certainly is. Fury looking good once again. Oh, Wolves have won, by the difficult. way. Wolves have won. Yeah, that's it. 7-4. 1-1. One, one. Now they're going into the third map. I think their map is club as well, actually. It's going to be a heck of a decider between them and Bliss then as they go the distance. Oh boy. And like you say, Wolves are just waking up at the right time by the looks of things. Bliss managed to beat them in the best of one yesterday, but it looks like one map might just not be enough for them today. All right, well, back onto our game then. As said, two and two. Going steady for both teams so far. Fury is their map pick. Find themselves with two rounds on the attack does not feel like Bomb a bad spot to be in. Cash DC going to be the push point. Are we seeing a Monty coming in once again? Yes, we are. So, Tim, the reminder of the thing that we caught out in the previous round that really worked against Fury was having no one playing below. Two C4s, two downs, two round winning yeah, moments really for Dark Zero. So, Fury, when they take over Garage this time round because they had three players in there previously, the answer is not to rotate every player then out towards the CC platform to start your push. No, absolutely not. Um... 
you see, the, I think the lesson is going to be learned. They need to make sure that they're in control um, of the bottom floor as well. Uh, Canadian this time, instead of being on the Valkyrie, is going to be on the Bandit playing aggressively up against that mirror window, looking for the trick. Um, it's pretty easily dealt with. They can pretty much just run up and smash it, which is exactly what they're going to do. Um, but it does at least tell him that the presence is there. Please don't let go of the Selma yet, like I call this. Um, no. I think that should have been a little bit obvious. I'm a little bit disappointed in like all this there. Um, there's no electrification on the wall whatsoever. He looks at one side and all of a sudden it becomes electrified. So he throws it at the other as if the bandit's not just going to put the charge on the other side as well. I'm a, a little bit surprised by that one. Sorry, like all this, but I've got to call that one as I see it. You've offended the ace. You must repent. I'm a hard, I'm a hard breach man. Um, I'm a hard breach man. <laughs> oh, do you want to step in and do his job, Tim? Not quite. Uh, no, I don't fancy, I don't fancy the gunfights against NJR and everybody else that goes along with it. Gavane, nice. he's going to be dealt with once again. They've done catwalk fantastically well. I've got to yeah. say, Fury have dealt with that really well twice now. To be fair, Dark Zero tried a bit more this time around. They had the Yokai drone in place to try and knock the Monty out, and that's why I know him for a second looked a little bit shaky up there, but kept himself full HP, dodged away, and when the fireball came from underneath, that was really all they needed. So good stuff coming out. Once again, they have catwalk control, but for me, it's going to be about this breach. Thinking about taking out the mirror window there, but chooses not to. There isn't any need. All he needs to see is that the bandit is not in position. Does take down a Yorkai drone as well. So again, this is good from Fury. They've got a lot of oh, what they need, but there is Nitro's below. Crit chase sees an opportunity. Chewie, he's got to get his man. He does take down Pamba. And that was a big risk from Dark Zero. That's a Nitro gone. There was one in the pocket. So they're now left with only Canadian, who has the ability to deny from below. And I'm sure that Fury are going to be watching for that oh. BG man. Does get himself taken out, but look at that from Grit J. I just gotta say, Dark Zero with the double jump out. Is that you? What on earth is going on? Now, I9's done the right thing here. Step forward aggressively, blocking off a doorway and looking to stop members of Dark Zero from pushing back in. Lycola's going in for the plant here as well. This time round, same spot, same sort of place, but this time he can stick it. Crit J into a triple in the round as well. Monty still on side for Canadian. I think his goose is cooked, and this round is not gonna be a winner. No, he's Please. already low health. Oh, boy, he he's been done, he's been done. That's going to be a round four Fury. So they get themselves ahead, not just in the map, but let's remember they're already one map up. They only need to win Clubhouse, whereas Dark Zero, they need to keep themselves in the Atlanta Major by winning Clubhouse. So a lot of work to be done ahead of them here. It could be a 4-2 attacking half here for Fury. Uh, they got a, a much better performance, I think, on CCTV there. They still did very well taking the catwalk, but they got the diffuser down much better. Uh, don't know, Dark Zero, they sort of played for those Nitros underneath last time around, but this time Pamba's throwing himself out a bedroom window, and I get it, there's a, a bit of comms going on there, saying, this look, box. I've got him by the white van, but you've got such precious cargo in your pocket with that Nitro that it is a big loss to lose him out of a window like that. It's another big round from Crit J as well, like, uh, really across the team, i is the one that you're looking at this game after a massive 4K that he had in round one, really propelling him forward, but it's been Crit J for me that has been the most consistent Consistent across these rounds, BG Man in comparison to last map. Pretty quiet, he's already on more deaths and certainly far fewer kills. But that's quite typical where you'll see players just kind of vary up and down map to map. We all do it ourselves when we're playing rank, for example. It happens. But Crit J again is that young gunner. I think a lot of eyes are on him. There's a lot of expectation. He's delivering on this map at the very least and has pulled Fury back ahead here. Three and two. Going to be down to basement then for the final defence from Dark Zero. I think they are pretty much locked and loaded down in the site again, so giving the map over to Fury. Uh, there's been two rounds so far. Fury have won one, Dark Zero won the other, so it is a 50-50, no real advantage to either side. Um, Fury certainly weren't as good in the last attacking round as they were in their first. They were able to really collapse on site with some great precision strikes to find a couple of kills and give themselves the room that they needed, but it did still come down to a 1v1 at the end between Lycolis and Rice, so um, Dark Zero certainly need to be careful here because there is definitely a world where Fury are able to take an advantage into the second half. Must be stretch. Going live. Got themselves a clear through the map and are working now on getting, I imagine, very, very soon. All the verticals opened up. Hatches being cracked open inside a kitchen at the same time, just making sure they're getting everything done and prepped before really having about half the round here to work with. Key change this time round. Obviously, BG Man being on the Thatcher means no more electrified hatches. Not that Dark Zero have a kite. They're going for the Bandit on Rice instead. 
Yep, this time it is Pamazu playing in behind that generator. Gavani's going to be a little bit deeper as he was in the first round. So again, a little bit of a switch in personnel and just where everybody's playing. Um, for the time being, Fury are opening those hatches, making sure, uh, again, whether it's phantom pressure or actual pressure, that there's just plenty for Dark Zero to think about. They did drop this hatch last time from Bar into Moto and push themselves into church. Rice is there, he's in position, ready to fight back, should that happen. And they know now that Bandit is trying to trick onto the triple wall as well. So a, a wall side take is doable, but definitely more challenging than maybe trying to go for what they've done before, which is the heavy blue side hits. They need to remove the Bandit away, because by the looks of it, Tim, this is going to be their attack, and they've chosen the hard side, that's for sure. I'd like to see a bit more pressure, I was just going to say, from kitchen side. Crit J is in there with the book opening everything up, just preventing anybody from playing underneath there. The hatch is open. Um, they haven't really done anything to deal with dirt, so I would have to suggest that they're going to push the blue and bar side, um, because otherwise dropping this hatch is going to be, well, asking for trouble. Bit of a rotate over here as well, with a couple of players looking to drop at the same time inside of kitchen. You can be a little bit isolated, really, if that's all you're going for. But by the looks of it, there's also a player coming down blue. So it's a three-point push coming in here. Hard focus immediately onto the church wall, mind you. Trying to force their way through the bandit. They might just get away with it. gaveni has gone down, but Dark's also been taken out. Kills come in, then. It's going to be a bit of a bloodbath. BG Man finds Rice. 20 seconds left to go. Nice there is one down. I-9 finds a real long range effort. BG Man onto Gaveni. This is all going Fury's way. 15 seconds left to go. Like always, needs to think about getting the plant down. How about that from Canadian? Uses the shotgun to create his angle and create the kill. But like always, is in there getting the plant down. BG Man says, don't you worry about it. I'm going to find the kill instead. And Fury take the round. It's 4-2. 4-2 attack in half. Fury might just be about to do it here, Tim. <laughs> they might actually be able to bring DZ down. Unless we see an absolute miracle on the attack inside from DZ. One hell of a bounce back. This could be done and dusted. We haven't had a tactical timeout from DZ on this map yet, and I'm sort of wondering exactly when that is going to be called, um, because surely it's going to come at some point. You wouldn't usually do it at the halfway mark, but I would expect um, if things don't go their way on the first attack, we might just see it then if they 5-2 down. Um, but like you said, there's a, there's a mental element that's going to start coming into this for Dark Zero, where they start thinking, you know, this we should be winning this game, and, Camera feet up and that energy is going to be sucked out of you, and maybe just maybe they don't have what they need to get back into this one because Fury are just riding high at the minute. Mm. You know me, Tim. I love seeing the castle. I'm always keen to see where these barricades go down. We've had a couple already dropped out so far. The third one coming down looks to be the SSG Rome-esque sort of style. One into main stairs, one through bathroom going out towards strip. A couple based around bar itself to lock down the central part of the map. And the hatch being opened up on the top floor. It is going to be that full three-floor Rome. Something we didn't see. Dark Zero do on their defensive side. They were very much playing the more hunkered down approach. Here, Fury taking the exact opposite approach of the game. Just getting out there and just uh, preventing Dark Zero feeling comfortable. Crit J is going to have that responsibility on his shoulders for the time being on the Oryx. It looks like a lot of the rest of Fury have sort of fallen back in towards sight. Um, so Crit J is going to be the one to watch. He's the one up on the top floor for the time being. Dark Zero need to get in there, get the drones ahead of them, make sure that they're clearing out. They are opening CCTV, so that's going to be their point of ingress. Seeing these drones whizzing past as well off the back of those bulletproof cams that they've got stationed right at the end of the hallway. So they can see what's going on at least for now around kitchen. <laughs> Someone sat on the cams. Someone else, I think maybe a black eye camera coming out there. Gaveni going down again. I mentioned it already back on that last map, but it's becoming the same story here. Just can't seem to get himself involved in this game. Just seems like everything is going against Dark Zero at the minute. Nothing seems to go their way. Fury picking up another good opener. It's the Ash, it's not the end of the world, but what it does, it's not just about the utility. You've got to think about the manpower and availability. So now, Fury, they don't need to worry about Crit J getting back to site. It's still 4v4 on site, even if Crit J loses his life. So now he can burn time. Now he can play a little bit fast and loose. He can gamble, he can take the gunfight. He can try to waste even more time get on the flank and just make life difficult for dark zero and for now getting the impact out onto those which means canadian should be going two by two indeed he is and trying to get that kitchen hatch opened up the black eye that was very conspicuously hidden away on the lounge sign also removed so that's a bit more utility being taken away from fury they had a lot of information coming into this round and sure slowly it's been like pulled away from them 
but it has helped run that clock down. Down goes BG, man. I know it's pretty quiet this map, but it's been massive in the series. Dart down again as well. NJR in a great position here, seemingly completely unchallenged. Yeah, NJR's done that really well. Um, Fury just, like you say, giving up blue, really, and that's a big mistake from them because Dark Zero have recognized that and taken full advantage. Like Aulis does manage to get himself back upstairs, but you're not going to find anybody inside a kitchen like Aulis. It's not where they're playing. And if he tries to move through here, he's going to be contending with Pambaru. He has that straight away. Knows where the man's coming from. It is as easy as that. And it just God, says that Fury down. were clutching at straws a little bit. Castle Barricade is completely working against them here. Crit J with a good shot, though. Don't write him off because, again, Bimega on this map could still clutch up. But three players from Dark Zero now breaching their way forwards. Only one left standing. This should be a Dark Zero round through and through. And sure it is. Pamba closing it out. Great first round from Dark Zero. Yep, good attack from them to bring one back. That's sending a message to Fury as well that Dark Zero are here to play. They're not beaten yet. And they were just, to be honest, in control of that. Fury, um, it's got to be frustrating from their side. They get the opening kill with BG, man. They're five versus four. They've got Crit J out on the roam. All they really need to do is sort of lock down sight with the other four. You know, have one in blue, have one in bar, have one in dirt, and then have one float into support. But instead, they allowed NJR into blue. And look at the damage that he did from there. It was just one after another. You know, you, you can't just give that space up. It's, yeah. it's just not going to work. These are the small things that I mentioned back at the start of this map as well. It's where the screws need tightening a little bit in areas for Fury. Uh, the way they play off each other at points, things like that as well. Just giving up crucial parts for defense. You really have to force Dark Zero to commit some kind of resource for, whether it's chucking a few nades or whether it's losing drones to clear it out, whatever it might be. But largely there, you've just seen the ace walk in for free and just dominate the entirety of the downstairs from there. Now we change sides, so we'll see how things go. It's going to be this extended to hole go. out towards the east, as you come to expect when defending gym and bedroom. We'll see if Dark Zero can punish that hole coming out from Fury. As last time round, Fury couldn't really make Dark Zero pay for it. Michaelis with the mirror window onto the outside wall. Uh, much the same as we see on CCTV. Uh, may well support uh, 703. There will be no bandit tricking efforts. They're not going to no. try to keep them out of there, so it's not going to support anything like that. Um, it can be shot out depending where the... Uh, Depending where they're trying to place the explosives, but on a roof that you can rappel down from to place, it's really not the end of the world. So I'm, I'm not too sure how much that's going to gain them, to be honest, other than the knowledge that they're out there on balcony. Um, but we will see as it continues. Um, like always, moves himself away. He's just watching for that push him through threezer, but I don't think he's going to be able to stay there. As that hatch gets taken out, it makes it very perilous for him. Yeah, a couple of C4s to play behind though on the balcony in the mirror. Some good options to play for the Nile here, the same way that Dark Zero did when they were defending on Cash and CC. Ruining that round for Fury a little bit earlier on. Could be a similar story. Going to start things out here a little bit late. 60 seconds really to get. The main breach opened up isn't exactly quick work. Pamba just looking, uh, he's sort of cautious there, as if there's a little bit of information to suggest that there's somebody around that area, but he's not going to be coming up against anybody anytime soon, I wouldn't have thought. Crit J um, just moving th back through into construction. Uh, you can see they're playing within a, a very small space here of Yuri. They've been forced right back. Construction and logistics is pretty much everything that they've got. So Dark Zero have got complete map control here. Um, 1 minute 35 left to go. They're going to be pushing their way into cash pretty soon, looking to open that wall. To construction so again fury gonna have to dip back and play in an even smaller area but for the time being using the impact nade crit j is able to prevent that just a way to set up as well <laughs> in the spot there's been a good spot to deny things away with the impact at least slow things down a little bit more again for dark zero air quotes patience is the words that comes into this one but really i think it depends on whether or not dark zero feel ready to hit the site to come that 30 second mark they've got 35 seconds to play with here i feel they've got a lot from what they already need to be honest with you feeling quite comfortable flashes to play behind as well got a couple more forest drones they can throw in far from out of it and you can just see how fury will congregate towards the northwest of these two sites really took on back so really, all eyes turn towards Dark Zero. Not having that West Breach open could be a big stinger for them, in my opinion. Yeah, it definitely could be. You can just see the line is drawn for Fury there. They're going to hold their positions now for the last 35 seconds. They're going to take the gunfights as they approach Pamba. He's just looking to pepper in through that wall, but he's not going to find anybody. Dark Zero needs to be picking kills up at this point. In goes more and more utility picked up by Wamai Magnus, just trying to force anybody out of position. Oh, Crit will be taken down. Gaveni is 
his inside aside and this could be the moment for Dark Zero the aggression is paying off Pamba gets one he knows they're in the shower cleans him out five versus two Canadians planting the fight back is on as like always manages to find one here comes BG man calls down from the window Dark Zero take another and they are finding their feet on the clubhouse attack two attacks in a row and looking very comfortable again when you get to that 30 second mark as long as they feel ready to say the word go then Dark Zero are all good it doesn't matter how much work you do slowing them down really good and convincing stuff so far and definitely helping by restricting the movement of the defenders with the help of the grim gadget just makes it so difficult to go really anywhere without being seen as you can see attackers being tagged in a couple of places on this top floor makes it all too easy a little bit of cover coming in and gaveni having a massive impact in this round three kills to his name See, it's just a, a bit more of a, a serious, uh, a serious approach to the team comms. Obviously, we saw the the fun Troy was having earlier, and there's definitely space for it. It hypes the team up, it gets the energy the there, the but they're very much focused on winning this. I think at this point in time, um, and they're just uh, keeping that sort of strictly business at the minute. Four four now, as they've thought their way back on Ten to uh, on clubhouse. They've leveled things up mm. much better on the attack here, Five which you know. It can be a bit of a roll of the dice on Clubhouse sometimes, but I know on the thorn, going to be all the way down in the basement. Something Dark Zero need to pick up and deal with. One of those games where it just turns into a very attacker leaning club. I mean, Dark Zero already 2 0 in this half overall. That is cheeky. I like this. Thorn Gadget in a great place. You've too. got to be creative with them because the fuse is such that um, any entry going in and going through, it's not really entry denial, isn't it? It's information nah. gathering, it's intel yeah. gathering, but it's also things like plant denial. You want to put them in a spot where somebody's going to have to stand still for a period of time. You know, you're not going to prevent somebody. It's not like a frost mat where you're going to catch them coming in through a window. Um, you know, you've, you've really got to think about uh, if you're trying to do any damage with them. It's, it's much more about that signal um, that somebody's entered. It's good for zone control the way I describe yeah. it, right? If you want to keep someone out of a certain area for a certain amount of time, fantastic. And that's exactly why we're planting. It is so good. Great. Clearly, they're really enjoying having the Valk, <laughs> Valk camp on this lounge spot. And you'd imagine that at this point, Dark Zero are more than aware of it, given they, they have the IQ on side. Crip moving his way around here, looking to challenge inside a garage. Right sort of idea as Rice is very nearby. Nade is going to go in to clear that shield out from Rice. That will do the job. Uh, can start pressuring on more towards Lounge. BG Man's not for giving it up yet, though. Um, he's going to be at the bottom. He gets his spot. He knows that they want to be attacking this and will win it. It's Crit J who steps out and gets the kill onto Rice. I9 is taken down elsewhere. And essentially a trade of men. Four versus four now. Halfway through the round, Pamba is established. He's cut off the line through Lounge. They need to be careful. If Crit J tries to move across here, he's going to find himself cut down. Yeah, he's got to know that they know about this, and sure enough, they do, but he manages to keep himself alive just. He's got two players coming in on the backside as well. He's in such a precarious spot, moving his way in towards Garage here as well. Do they know about this, though? I hope to God they do. Canadian ready thinking that he's playing up on stairs, and he's simply not there, but he runs out into a Claymore. It could have been a big heroic moment, but completely denied by that Claymore. Critchier with a bit more patience there, like you say, could have had a huge impact with Canadians still putting the utility in towards those small stairs. It indicates Catered to us that they weren't aware that he'd been able to slip past and he could have been a real danger but now they're dealing with the catwalk instead he's dealing with it with ease as the fire bolts come in the utility rains out and dark he's going to be dropped and that is now catwalk control it's lounge control it's everything that dark zero need it is a bit of a suicide spot to play and you know full well that you are going to get everything just thrown at you whether it be nades fire monty shields everything is coming in for you and really maybe there's a point there are playing a bit more defensively once you'd already lost a few players. But Pamba has been cleaning house in the round, hits a 3K. He's up to 14 kills. That's the Pamba that we saw against G2. Going in for the plan here as well. Underneath, and it even catches out Troy. I'm pretty sure I said something about plant spots. Uh, <laughs> Canadians just <laughs> falling foul of the razor volume there. As I said, if you want to pick up those kills, it has to be in a position where somebody's going to try to stand still. Canadian just not reacting quickly enough um, to the trigger sound. It doesn't matter. Dark Zero still got the round done. They take themselves into the lead on Clubhouse and Fury. They are looking like backs are to the wall. And as I said, there's, you know, there comes a point, you're 4-2 up at the half. Fury maybe start thinking, hey, there's an opportunity for us 
chance to win this and that mentality changes from one of freedom to one of pressure and it's mm. going to feel a lot lot different inside of the team out comes the tack timeout very reasonable i think as well when you've lost three rounds in a row on your defensive side there's uh, a conversation to be had there understandably coach wants to weigh in and say right we played three different sites we've lost every single one there is work to be done here time to course correct we did so well coming out of that first half really here it's what two rounds and you've done and dusted you're going home after what felt like potentially such a good spot to be in coming out the back of the earlier maps yeah i think we are potentially going to be seeing was it oregon that i was, a dis that I was yes um our decider was indeed we're definitely um looking down that line Amberman. at this minute in time i'm not sure that dark zero are going to be stopped here on clubhouse now they've got themselves onto the attack they are looking much more comfortable and much more energetic than they have been so far Absolutely. I mean, it looks like they've really found the thunder now and it's going to be hard to slow them down. But maybe that tack timeout will change the way this comes out. Looking at Fury's lineup, though, incredibly passive. Well, we saw the full three floor roam coming out from them last time around. They're taking a leaf out of Dark Zero's book and gone full defensive down here in the basement. Electro denial in towards the mirror, the Goyo, the castle to lock things down. I mean, I say that they're going for the same barricades as previously with the castle. So maybe they'll have some roaming coming in again. Just not quite to the same level that we had before. No, maybe not. Uh, the other game is also on club, by the way, and it's currently 2-1 to Bliss on the defensive side. Oh, of course, that is one map apiece as well. So whoever wins that map will win. Uh, the loser will go home. So we will keep you updated with how that one is going if you're not keeping an eye on it yourself. Um, this one's difficult to look away from, though. I must agree, Dark Zero fighting back now, looking to take us to a map three of our own. They're going to be attacking onto Church and Arsenal. I like to see that Fury have got the mirror this time, like all this. Um, as position one looking in towards blue. Uh, NJR was able to just wander in there last time, just play around generator and be, pick up a double kill for free, really. Um, and that's something that Fury have to address. They do. Well, imagine again, it's going to be a similar story for Dark Zero. Just a slow, steady march on fours. NJR working his way in across that top floor to try and deal with crit. But equally, we still think that for a second, see Pamba charging his way down towards dirt and just clearing the Goyo canister off the dirt door before backing out to rejoin his team to get the verticals open in and around Kitchen. But those two Goyos being taken out means that dirt is now a very, you know, real and possible angle they can make use of later in the round if they want to use it when things start looking sticky elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely that. If nothing else, it's that phantom pressure Fury know that Dirt is now a potential attack angle, especially uh, the mirror player that's looking on into blue. It's just something they're going to be having to be aware of. You know, a nade flying across from Dirt, for example, could be a specific danger to them. So they need to be very, very careful of that. I know there's no nades on the side of Dark Zero, but the defenders aren't necessarily to know that. Still working their way through this top floor, expecting to find Threat still somewhere. and. The problem is he's long gone. I'm pretty sure he's back on site at this point. Has been now for about 10, 15 seconds. So lots of attention being given upstairs here for the first 90 seconds of the round. Pamba and his work inside the dirt is definitely going to speed things up when they come around to start looking at the verticals. But hatches are still closed up, but they're still trying to find him. They've got no idea that he's long gone. No, and that's, you know, that's great play from Aroma. If you can burn more time, your absolute, uh, you know, key objective as Aroma is to burn as much time as possible. If you can get kills along the way, it's a bonus. Nitro sounds like it's going to be thrown, but doesn't uh, detonate just yet. We'll see it's whether that's going to keep hold of it for the time being. Um, but I did hear that sound as well. And, yep. Um, we <laughs> saw the book just it. backing out of there quickly. So the greatest fear-inducing sounds in time. You want to see what Halloween's like? Just listen to that sound. Getting the pings out downstairs, so from the Jackal, I believe it is just forcing Lycolis back a little bit here. But no, sorry, EE1D came through and caught him. And then there's a Jackal scan on top of that as well, just to make life extra miserable. It has forced them all back, but even with these tools to deal with Romas, again, Crit J wasted so much time by really only being upstairs for a short amount of time, but doing enough just to convince Dark Zero that he was still there. Now they're paying the price, 25 seconds to go. Kitchen hatch isn't opened up. Barely any verticals opened up either. This could sting unless they can get some kills. Yeah, absolutely that. They're gonna and have no get in. but to run in and get them. And I tell you what, run in and get them. They wow. do, NJR, Pamba Zoo. How many times have we been saying those names over the last few wow. rounds? Going absolutely huge when their team really needs them. Wow. they cut down by Rice. And it is another Dark Zero round. They are an unstoppable unstoppable runaway train at the minute and fury they're just stood on the tracks waiting to get hit two halves to a game of siege tim i say it every single match we seem to cast because it's true i'm pretty sure most people us those at home watching as well four and two at the half you'd have been saying wow fury are on it they're going to be able to beat dark zero here 
I don't think many would have accounted for a four, four rounds in a four rounds in a row win comeback by DZ to now be sat in the lead and be about to take this one away from Fury. And it will be heartbreaking for Fury given how well they've played, but this kind of was becoming the outcome that we expected it was going to be. And that will be Dark Zero joining G2 as the team going through from this group. This is the difficulty with best of threes, you know, and this is why it's important that the elimination matches are best of threes because it just goes to show there's another element to Siege, not just Siege, but esports and sports and any sort of competition in general. And that is, can you do it when it matters? Can you do it when that win is on the line? Fury, as I say, played with freedom on Chalet, but it just looks like the pressure is mounting on them here on clubhouse the smiles have gone the laughing has stopped they just seem to be playing with a different energy at the moment they don't have the answers and dark zero using their experience are taking full advantage of that they're on top of them and they are pummeling them right now aren't they just one more round boys one more round one hell of a comeback it'll be given again they were down four and two to pull it back to five rounds in a row fury win this round though tim oh my god it could well be a map three overtime Imagine. I'd love that <laughs> to round out play-ins. Yeah, have a whole sort of a packed into two days, it'd feel like at that point. So Dark Zero looking to stretch us out to Oregon. It's going to be this round to do it. They've got two chances, actually. Um, as I said, though, for Fury, I always sort of thought, win quick or you're going to struggle because when it comes down to sort of the pressure time, the intensity going up, the tension the stamina rising, the stamina, everything else towards the end of these maps, that's where Dark Zero are likely to shine. That's where Fury have maybe got that little bit less experience. Um, so we're going to see just Dark Zero softening up that top floor at the minute. It is bedroom that they're attacking on to, but they're going to work to push in from CCTV. Been a pamba day so far, as anyway I can describe it. 16 kills on this map earlier against G2. He was well up there towards 17, 18 kills as well. Mega performance from him. Still, it's I-9 to strike first in the round, bringing down Gaveni. That's the ace taken offline. That can be a bit of a stinger. Certainly could be. It was a bit of a freebie for I-9, you've got to think. And Dark Zero maybe just missing that with the drones. They've still got eight up, so no real excuses there. I-9 just being cautious. He knows he's going to be tracked down because they know exactly where he is. Pamba's waiting for him here, but I think I-9 knows that he's around the corner. So he's just going to wait. He's going to pre-fire, but no, Pamba much quicker on the trigger. Takes him down with a headshot, levels things up. 4-4. Four, four. 17 and 4, he just keeps on climbing towards that 20 dub, or 20 kills, sorry, in the map. Assuming it needs any more rounds to get things concluded out. Blessing still being that Canadian had those hard breaches in back pocket. I was going to remark and say with the Thermite now, you want to get VIP while well, VIP. Single wall open up in towards construction, plus the CC wall, plus Jacuzzi wall. At least having those on side means that you have the ability to open up a couple more things as well. So this is why that insurance choice of having a couple of hard breach charges in back pocket is employed by a lot of teams. Just going to send in the utility there just to make sure nobody's hiding in the corner of logistics. That's unfortunate. Lycoris is able to recover the nitro, though, to have another go should he want to. Pamba, oh. does he catch his man? He does not. What? Manages to find the spray down on the stairs, though. BG man really needs to be winning those. Lycoris is there for the trade. Drops Pamba, will finish it off. Three versus two, two versus two. As Dark stands up and is countered inside of Jim Canadian team taking damage and what looked good for Dark Zero seems to be dropping away. Not a lot of time to play with here as well. They're going to have to really push in as a pair here and pick off these fights one to one. A bit of a dance around here as well coming on through. Rice goes down. Lycolis going absolutely huge. Canadian left standing but Lycolis over to the ITA gets the finish. Six and five. Fury keeps on fighting. They want that map to overtime. They want to get this done and dusted. They don't want to be seeing anything of Oregon. Remember two rounds. Well, not three sorry that Fury will require one takes them to overtime and two more will get the job done and that will send them into phase two and send Dark Zero home without any further ado so we're going to be heading into that potentially really soon we've got round 12 to come Dark Zero no more mistakes now no more mistakes you've ended your run of winning rounds <laughs> and you now need I mean to I'll, take, I'll take I'll take winning four rounds in a row Oh, it's certainly I'll not bad it. at all, you know, <laughs> but uh, Fury, are they finding that little bit of momentum, that little blip that they need just when they need it? I just want this to go all the way to 15 now, Tim. Course, I think do. it deserves it. But not just us, but also Fresh deserves it for his bingo card. No, it wouldn't be. It's not map three. Map three. Hmm? Specifies on the bingo card. Map three, dead oh, right. over overtime. I see, I see, I see. So it'd have to be on Oregon. I thought it was all the way. Fair enough. Ten seconds we'll go. take it to Oregon if we have to. We can do that too.
Still plenty of chances. Round 15, map three. That's, I think, exactly what everybody wants to see from I mean, there's a lot of elimination games to come next week. Let's not forget as well going into the Swiss stage. All the non-elimination games are best of one. But when the team... Next week's uh, format, for those who don't know, is really, really fun. It's a... You have to win three times and you make it through. Lose three times and you're out. But your potential... Your, all your third games, the ones where you would be on three losses afterwards, are all best of threes. So some teams can go through real slogs just to stay in it if they start off losing early on. But it just brings so much excitement as a format, so I'm really excited to get into that as well. Crit is going to find his way back down onto site. Uh, we've seen him roaming the last couple of times, but this time he's going to play the Fenrir. Look at Pamba, though. He's not messing about. He's getting straight down those main stairs. I tell you what, that's a position where you'll catch somebody out if they decide to just push up and try to challenge onto Kitchen Corridor, for example. They're going to run right into the face of Pamba, and it could be a little bit of a shock for them. All right. Bronze in position, ready and waiting. I liked how last time around that they managed to burn their way in through dirt really quick. Again, it opened up that possibility of later in the round to give them a new angle, even if they didn't make use of it. And you see this quite a lot in Siege, I think, where teams will do things that look a bit maybe strange in the moment, but it is to prep things later in the round that maybe they don't use and you go, well, that was a waste of time. But it's more making sure it's there available as an option to them if they need it at some point in the round. Just making sure they've got multiple options in case the primary one fails off where, I don't know, you can't open up Bar Hatch, for example, as Fury learned back in the first half when they brought no EMPs along for the attack. I know, just looking, waiting, ready to apply the electrical or we'll keep it the trick. I mean, same story here, do it now. He hasn't got a trick, it just electrify. No one can take it off, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's nothing really that can be done. It's on a concrete surface. They'd have to come down um, and take it out from the bottom of main stairs, realistically. Obviously, he doesn't know that there's no EMPs the on this team. He's not aware, but... Uh, so he's going to have to trick it and then just leave it tricked, potentially. No, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you've only got an Ace on the other side. If he is able to catch a Selma charge, you know, Ace can only open one hatch anyway. They've got the hard breach utility. And that should be the sign tap, they need. But it could seriously limit them. Now that he's had to EMP, sorry, yeah, impact nade off the electro charge on the other side, that should really be the telling sign for I-9. And I think he has released away his claw and is going to leave it on there now, knowing that they've got no EMPs. Yeah, exactly. Good right. um, So the double Selma charge opening up the stock hatch. 45 seconds left to go. Dark Zero fans are going to be setting um, getting a little bit worried I think at this point because it is going to come down to one of those late pushes more Do you than believe likely. Pamba? Pamba sends the nade in towards dirt but there's plenty of room for Lycolis to get away from it 30 seconds left to go and they're <laughs> looking to get you. themselves inside a site yeah. Rice he is going to announce his presence by triggering that dread mine there's the spray down Lycolis has to get the kill here he's going to be flashed <laughs> he's not going to get it he gets spun round every which way 15 <laughs> seconds Dark Zero are coming and they're in a charging forward they found the kills they need two left Standing dark, finding one back. All three are grouped up. They've got them all on red pings, Tim. They know what's going on. He sees the head. He's got the down as well as they've got time to recover and get the plan off here as well. Yes, but they've got to win this one versus one. I-9 not quite managing to do it. It's going to require map three, Tim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We go all the way to a third mark. Dark Zero are looking sort of a little bit fatigued there after that one. Fury put him through the ringer. They run him right the way to round 12, despite Dark Zero having a couple of attempts before that. But they get the job done nonetheless. They take us to Oregon and Fury. They look just as tired across there. You've got another map to come yet. Yeah, there's a lot more pressure to be soaked up. Both teams know how much this means now that we're going into a third map. Literally one map stands between either team and going home or making it through. I can't wait to see how it goes. Let's let them have a little rest. We'll catch our breaths and we'll tune into some of the B-Stream where Bliss are facing off against Wolves in map three. Back in a few. Right, to be able to hack if you have those clutch drones in your hands. But, you know, like you said, on the side of the attack, because they don't really need to worry about getting these walls open, they don't really need to put a whole lot of redundancy. Uh, they have a lot of options elsewhere, especially in through the mid round. That being said, for this particular bomb site, this is an exception. I think bringing the double hard breach is not a bad idea, Team Bliss. By having both the Hibana and the Thermite, it really opens up their options as they get in towards the basement. Not only are they going to be able to open up all the hatches, but they might also be able to get word of walls over on the triple wall to create a run-in hole and another opportunity for an execute. Oh, that would be something to see. I haven't seen Thermite breach the triple church wall in a hell of a long time. It's Re a thing that happens. It's, that used it to is. happen, but not these days. Well, maybe. You never know. I like this from Wolves. Even just barricading these off-site doorways to try and slow down Bliss. Even if it only gives them an extra few seconds, it's going to be massively valuable in that late round. Reloading. Mid-round work now for Team Bliss. 
vertical pressure and what's Brando doing on the Clodge drones? That's that's a big question here because whatever he's going to be able to hack is also going to enable Bliss in for the execute. He's going to call then the point of least resistance that Bliss can then capitalize on. Here comes the bottom main stairs pressure. All three walls on the triple wall actually close and so the pressure inside of uh, Short has actually been forfeited to Team Bliss but Wettables instead is going to dedicate that exothermic charge all the way over in dirt. Bliss what is the plan here? I can only imagine it's going to be a kitchen hatch drop from here on out. Well, there's just so many players all over the map that it's hard to say where Bliss will commit. The question is, how is the setup from Wolves? Do they have enough fortification in these positions? There's still a smoke. Three babes in pocket for Shinka. There are two sets of grenades. If Bliss in these last 28 seconds can at least dislodge one or two of these anchors, it's going to make their lives so much easier as they try and drop the hatch. And it seems like that's what they're going for now. Both players with nades in their hands and cooking them. 15 seconds to go. So he's looking for something here on dirt. The nade does not sink a kill. And Fisher Guy drops into the meat grinder. That player boosted up on the AKs. It's Mowgli once again. Traded on back. Sage might have this. It's a 3v3, but Deadshot springs up again. Oh, no. C4! Oh, oh, Shinka denies the plan regardless, but what a shot from Wettables to shoot off that C4. Wolves steal the round away regardless. Shinka barely denying the plan. Oh man, Oda, I really thought that they had that. Holy moly, that was a nice shot of the C4 cheese. Oh my god, that was so scary. Bliss, unfortunately, not finding success as the execute came through. All of the utility was for nothing. The flashbangs went through, but on the other side of the flashbangs was a warden player, and he went. So anyway, <laughs> I could see you, by the way, oh, as you drop down anyway. the kitchen hatch. Brando did a fantastic job coming in through blue, but he got shot down by the crossfire moments later. And then Oda almost securing that C4 plant before it went down. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for Bliss and Wolves. Keep their composure in through the execute and can close out another round. Yeah, and they keep their lead as well. Remember that this map started with two in a row from Bliss. Since then, Wolves have found four of the last five rounds. This has been a fantastic game from Wolves thus far, piece by piece. They will not go down quietly. Deadshot now on the soul is something we haven't seen a lot of thus far. A very powerful operator, especially against Bliss. Bliss love banning out the Solus, but to our surprise, getting rid of the bandit in both of the maps here that we've seen in the last two, they are leaving that Solus up, and with Deadshot's current form, I'd be terrified going up against him. That's a good point. I can't believe we haven't spoken about that yet because Team Bliss basically only banned Solus, like on every map. I think this is the first time we've seen them deviate away from it in like most of the stage too. Mm. Alas, here we go. Dim and Bedroom attack for Team Bliss. Wettables is going to get that uh, kennel streak open nice and easy. No resistance on the other side as we've been speaking of and it's gone. That's all right. Indeed, very easy to get a breach on. The clearing power positions is a whole nother ball game. This is Jim and Bedroom, the bomb site. And this is the jacuzzi wall that uh, spelled doom for Bliss the last time they attacked this bomb site against Space Station. Failing to breach that wall was why they lost it. Oh no, Mowgli, what are you doing? Where are you going, mate? He was caught out in weights and quickly taken on down on a rotation. That is a big play to take down. Oh wow. Shinka. Shinka's nearly lost his life as well. Oh, I reckon they're sending in something in through logistics hatch. Yeah, Sage has both burned both of his nades, and that sent Shinken down to about a slither of HP. So they are trying really hard to dislodge these players external from the map, and that's what uh, Wettables has been able to do on the first one into Mowgli, but they want to find a little bit more success before they dedicate themselves to an execute. Now, if they want to go for a sweep... Oh, wait, what's going on there? I think Deadshot's just tried to go out for a run out on Brendo and has been taken down in the process, but Brendo's kind of stuck in his position, right? They can't really go for the sweep from here on out because p4 is here waiting to meet the resistance meanwhile odo on the other hand with his set of grenades is going to try and do even more damage there's no need for a sweep from bliss all that's required is focusing up on the bomb site identifying when are we going to be able to move in and look to try and threaten a plant meanwhile the rest of wolves are likely in position to try and deny to try and hold on bb finds one can't get the second as he is traded on back Shink is such low HP, but meanwhile, P4 is taking out Brendan. Oh, the timing, P4! You cannot get unluckier than that. Two low HP wolves to try and stave off Bliss, but Shinka has found one despite the low health. Fish needs to get into position. The sound cover 
as he forces this plant down. Oda has to support his teammate, Fisho Guy. One second left on the plant. Oda spots the player, but is it gonna be enough? Right around the corner, here comes Sink. You're not aiming high enough. You gotta get this shot. Oda, you gotta land it, that's P4. But Shinka still remains. Fisho dispatches with him. And with that, an even scoreline. This time, it really is the last chance saloon. Not just for one of these teams, but for both of them. It's going to take us all the way through to map three on Oregon to see who goes through and who goes home out of Dark Zero and Fury. This has been one of my favorite matchups that we've had so far. And it's the first map three that you and I have covered here in Atlanta. And it really is anybody's for anybody tuning in at this point thinking, you know, I'm going to check that out. It's going to map three. How's it been so far? Well, Fury. Well, Troy's face, I think, says it all. Uh, exactly. It's been exhausting for both teams. You know, Fury <laughs> took a good win on Shally. They've won each other's maps. Dark Zero chose Shale, Fury, Ch Fury chose Clubhouse, and you can see the stats there of how Clubhouse went. It was all Dark Zero, really, um, until Fury grabbed a little bit in the middle, but other than that, it's... Uh not quite as close, really, I think, as the scoreline suggests, mostly. I think really looking at it, Pamba was the difference in that game. Pamba diff, quite literally. 21 on 5, he sat out as well. You know, when you look at the kills and how they are broken down across the rest of the teams, really hard to separate the two. Pamba just really was that far ahead. And it came down for a second in that very last round in round 12 to look like Fury might have found the answer. A shot through onto the planter to stop Dark Zero getting the round win through. But they managed to get someone back on that plant and they won out the one versus one inside of Long Corridor. Which pulls us through, as we said, onto Oregon. But in case you missed it, here are a few highlights. And if you're enjoying, once again, that B-Stream game that's going on that will be soon drawing to a close as they are in their map three. Twitch.tv forward slash Rainbow Six Bravo to finish the action there. Just so many big moments uh, in those 12 rounds. And like you say, Pamba really was just in charge of things. Oh, he was just. unstoppable uh, in many ways. We saw there the castle unable to catch him out in bar. He just had the answer a lot of the time. Um, it's unfortunate for Fury in some ways. They did have their opportunities. Um, but I've got to say, I really do think Dark Zero deserved the map. They were the better team on Clubhouse. Um, and they came away with their rewards for that one. So it's going to be a last map decision on Oregon. <laughs> Which is Tasty. what we all love. Oh. Tasty. We love it when it takes all three maps because you just know the competition's been that close so far and it's really hard to call going into that third and final map. Oregon is that decider. It's not a preference for either team. Just means it sits lovely in that spot where both teams have said, you know what, if it takes us there, we're both happy playing this one. Yeah, absolutely that. It's, again, I said it earlier today. I'll say it now. There's... There's no strategical advantage on Oregon often for many teams. It's just about getting there. Whose fundamentals are better? Who's going to win the gunfights? Who's going to do the job? Um, and I think that's perfect for this matchup, to be honest, to finish on. Well, it will be confirmed that it is the very last map of planes. And the map is now ready. So let's get ourselves into it. 15 rounds stand, potentially 15 as a max. Stand between one of these teams and we're carrying through into phase two for the other. It's nights out. Good night. Sleep tight. They go home first thing tomorrow. For Dark Zero, it'll be a kicker to go home so soon on home soil for fury who have battled so valiantly over the last two days it would be disappointing for them but an experience that i'm sure they will remember for a long time here we go tim into oregon to settle this fan sale settle the score once and for all i'll be corrected if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure the social vote at the beginning of this map one was 81 percent um, for dark zero 19 percent for fury that's changed somewhat coming into this one. We've seen uh, the believers in Fury sort of coming out of the woodwork a little bit and starting to uh, get a little bit louder and back their team. Fury have certainly shown their worth in this tournament and shown that they've earned their place in this match against Dark Zero. Whoever wins here is thoroughly going to deserve it. Both have had their moments. We've got the bands coming in. It's going to be Ying. Is it going to be Dokabe? Or are we going to have no, somebody be. different? Hey, there it is. Different order, same he, result. He does not want to get to see him much. We did see him back in Mat 1, but outside of that, yep, same bands coming on through. Onto those defender bands. That's where you can see some changes coming in, as we've spoken about before. And coming on to Oregon, maybe see a mirror band coming out at some point. Pretty strong on this map across all sites, really. Azami going to be the first one that is taken away, though. 
And as soon as the second defender comes in, it's going to be Fury to take it away, finish things off and send us into mm -hmm. our first preparation phase. Fenrir will be the one to go, which means we're going to have Valkyrie, we're going to have Mira, we're going to have Kaid all available. So this could be a tough one for the attackers. We saw the Fenrir coming out actually earlier on when Ju and DZ played against G2. So we know that they aren't really scared of the Fenrir, but Fury clearly not wanted to deal with that themselves, just get it off the board entirely. Going to start things off with Fury on the defensive side and pretty stock standard comp coming out so far. That Mirror and that Kaid, like we spoke about, not being banned away, will be brought along by the defenders here for round one. Now we get to see how well DZ can orchestrate some attacks onto this map. It's going to feel very reminiscent for them because this was the map that they lost 8-6 earlier on to G2. You'd hope, really on paper, that this should be a comfortable ride for them against Fury, but Fury so far has shown that beating them is no walk in the park. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, so we've got the mirror, we've got, um, as you say, the Kaid. So they're going to be able to secure electrical hatch um, from the meeting side. There's nothing really being brought along. Ah, there we go. Um, so we've got the Thatcher. We potentially had the impact EMPs. It was more the hard breach that I was concerned about. There was nothing to actually open them up. The Canadian has switched onto the Capitao, who does have them. Grim also has been switched on to by NJR, so they now have the options to get those hatches. I was a little bit concerned at first. We had sort of Twitch and Ash and others in there and uh, a limited ability to be able to open up those verticals, um, but uh, you certainly don't want to be leaving a mirror sat in electrical watching over bunker for the entire round. Absolutely not. I think Crit J is feeling a little bit contained in this round, being on the Goya rather than being able to charge around like an absolute lunatic. That said, I think he is the one that sat around Zula right now, looking to do a bit of challenging, along with I-9, who equally has been moving around the map. That is a filthy one-tap, like, holy hell, goodbye, Rice. Start as we mean to go on, I Ouch, think, um, is going to be the message there from Fury. Um, still one, is it, it's sort of more back to the chalet approach of, let's get up in their faces, let's show them they're in for a gameplay with a bit of freedom. Uh, Gavini no, and the me. gridlock of Pambazu have got themselves into meeting. They're a established in there, but to be honest, Fury aren't probably going to contend the rest of the map that much now. They're five versus four, they've got themselves back to sight. I think they're probably going to be happy with what they've got. I mean, the beauty as well is you've caught out the Thatcher there, who we spoke about early on being that repick coming in for them. Like, is still with one electric floor in back pocket, but it does mean they can probably get one of these walls locked down, assuming they can deal with the Twitch drones, the shock drones coming out from Gaveni. Shouldn't be the end of the world for them. It's Canadian who stepped across the playing on the Capital here. Saw it employed quite a bit back on Clubhouse. So not really too surprised to see it coming here in the place of something like a Ying that you'd normally see used for executions in towards the basement. Just a bit of an alternative side set that they found for this to work. Yeah, I think just spotting out the feet of I-9 there. So needs to be careful. Doesn't know that he's been drawn. And um, that's something that, there we go. The Twitch drone comes in. So he does know he is going to take it out though. Pampasu looking to move down. Follow those gridlocks in there. NJR it is who managed just to find like all this that's going to level things up and that was from the laundry side we've seen a lot of pressure coming from the laundry side on oregon today and yesterday mm. um it's certainly been a more popular location for the push than maybe otherwise previously imagine we'll see Kaveni here heading down towards construction site and trying to push in where previously oh, and i was playing that timing on the nade create just running straight into it losing his life in the process got a couple of kills coming out here that i'm not going to say like they're easy for uh, for uh, Dark Zero, but Fury have really handed themselves on a silver platter over to Dark Zero a few times across this series. Yes, yeah, I think Fury are going to be a little bit frustrated with this, and it maybe just goes to show the size of the task that they're up against. They get the good opener, they take Rice off the board, and then they've not really been able to do much since Dark Zero have been able to turn it around. They're going to get another. They're sort of just walking on in and doing what they want to at this point at Dark Zero. BG Man maybe starts a bit of a fight back, uh, but he's seriously low health at the minute. 13 Five. seconds left to go. Time could be a big factor yeah, here. The Canadian is down. Two down. is down. It's all up to NJR. He's effectively one versus two. You can't do it as Dark finds his man and Fury almost looking like the round the tide had turned against them. They managed to close it out and get the job done in round one. Canadian going down there was the big one as well. I'm pretty sure he had the diffuser in hand, so it was a bit of panic stations really kicking there. I can hear Dev absolutely wailing away behind us. So I could only assume that something is happening over there, but my laptop has dieball been sat here, so I can't see. <laughs> we have no idea what. We just know. Some. I'll find out. Two rounds away I from the I think that might be Aussies. Wolves um, that are doing uh, something. We will see. Um, so it's, it's 5 4 to Bliss. <laughs> I can only assume that means that Wolves have won and it's currently 5 5. Possibly. Jesus. Possibly. 
But <laughs> so that's very, a series. Very, very close on the other side. Dark Zero then, oh, one round down. Let's not forget, one map each. We are on our third map. Fury are looking to cement this lead with another. They've got themselves on the defense to start with, so they could be expecting a 4-2 half here at least. If they can get Dorms locked down, they then get the roll of the dice on the tertiary side, and it's going to be a big one for them. Indeed it is. They can hold it down, make it three. Scary times. Now, Pamba last time around, when we played against G2, made use of the Amara to zip straight into tier three and establish control of that side of the map pretty quickly. Wouldn't be too shocked if we see a similar repeat of events coming in here. Sure enough, out comes the Garok, straight up into tier three he goes. And normally you'd expect to see someone like I-9 or Crit waiting for him up here, but instead he's treated by nothing but silence. Yeah, he held that angle for the longest time against G2 and picked up Uno when he tried to rotate around because what they're going to do is Rice will go in on the Maverick and try to open up Attic Wall and Pamba's there just to protect him in doing so in case anybody tries to flank up. It did pay dividends for them last time, but there's not really attention being paid towards that side of the map from Fury. So Pamba, I'm not saying he's wasting his time. He needs to be there. He needs to cover that angle. He's just probably not going to get any joy from it. You're not the Maverick on side here, and probably one of the very rare cases where you still see Maverick being used after he lost his frag grenades, very much faded into obscurity for a lot of teams. But valuable on things like Clubhouse, for example, if you want to guarantee that CC wall gets opened up, but also pretty good for Oregon to slice your way through this attic wall and get yourself moving forwards. That's exactly what he's going to do. He will start working there now. BG Man just looking for that angle. He will see that attic wall being opened up. Rice is led down, so he's nice and safe. Uh, BG Man's just waiting for any opportunity you can guarantee you'll actually open up behind the boxes so the reason that they do that like that is if you just open up on the boxes side a player can rush up to that other side and wait for you to push in through so by opening the line of sight there you can have pamba watching from above nobody can push past boxes there so it just keeps rice safe yeah working their way through half the round concluded then and still getting themselves marching on through at it crypt is being a little bit of a naughty boy Working his way through the basement here and around lobby, there is a player slowly starting to gather up, not too far away. It is Gaveni. Backing away here, probably shouldn't see himself caught out, but you know that Crit's just dying to have an impact off on the flank. Yeah, just going to use the nades from underneath. He's looking to just clear off any utility that is going to be stopping that wall getting opened, um, potentially, but... Uh... Half reach has been placed by Canadian, so I'm not sure who they've got. I think maybe just a little bit of info of somebody playing in behind that wall as well, maybe looking for the kill. There you go. They've got the utility yeah. placed and off as well, so they were just making sure that that wasn't going to be um, sort of tricked or taken out or anything like that. Like always, will find an opener onto NJR, though. Fury once again with an advantage. He's in the <laughs> closet here, and he's, I tell you what, getting aggressive. Oh, oh, oh. He nearly finds more, but shut down by Canadian. Spray would have been enough there just to kind of natural record to collect two kills if they weren't too careful. Pat goes low, Canadian to another, a trade back again into a three versus three. Back and forth stuff between these two teams so far in the round. Gavani going low, Canadian almost being slaughtered as well, but managed to find one for themselves. It's Rice getting I-9, two left on side for Fury, and no time left for Rice to get anything done. Fury up two and zero on the defense of Oregon. It's an expected, but a good start for Fury. Expected in the sense that Dorms and Laundry two tend to be defender sided here on Oregon. Still got to get them one though. They're no free sites and like I say now Fury have sort of got that free roll of the dice they just get a chance here they're on the tertiary site they don't really expect to win it but I tell you what if they do what a big start that will be for them they could be looking at a 5-1 half if they keep this up absolutely though as we saw back on clubhouse we had Dark Zero winning four rounds in a row before Fury managed to finally fight back a little bit only for Dark Zero to then close the map out and that was after a 4-2 half towards Fury to kick things off. So as good as they're looking so far, two halves to a game of Siege. Wait until we see how Dark Zero deliver. But it is so far looking so good for Fury. Attackers have discovered the location. Gonna move to kitchen and meeting for their third choice site then. Um, we saw Dark Zero earlier using the attic a lot when they were defending this site. So I would expect to, you know, that's something that they're gonna be very aware of. I don't know whether Fury are gonna position somebody up there or not, but uh, Dark Zero certainly need to make sure they clear it out because we saw how powerful that vertical can be on this site. I don't think Fury have got anybody up there just yet, um, but BG Man and Dark are both above. Uh, sorry, no, Crit J is not uh, 
not dark, that's upstairs. So there is at least two of them up there. They could position somebody into attic. Uh, Canadian's just going to be feeding that information in for the time being. And dark still working on the frost mats. I have to get him in my headset just to like, listen to what's going on behind us. Turns out Bliss and out 6-5 against Wolston. One more round. And they knock the French team out. They become an Aussie team, making Not it through only to phase two. Not only do they do that, but they also <laughs> prove me right, Des, which is the important part, of course. <laughs> I mean, being right, Tim, that's what's most important in life, right? It certainly is. <laughs> I love to say I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't I know it. <laughs> Givani trying to get his way through the wall, but impacted off was the Selma pretty quickly, which means for now at least the wall stays closed. Going to have to find an alternative way to work through because they are, I don't want to say running short on the breach, but the larger breaching, things like the Thermite, the Ace, for example, uh, it's all well and good, and you've got a lot of charges in NJR's back pocket, but not really the kind of thing you turn to when you want a real big hole opened up. Again, Pamba just using that ability to get in towards T3 quickly, going to hold down the rear stage stairs. Nobody there that's going to be challenging him, like always. He's a little bit closer in position, but I can't see him looking to get that aggressive and try to move up there. We've got two of Dark Zero just out on the sort of dining side as well, moving in through showers. I-9 does get spotted out. The no. challenge is likely to follow. Oh. They just miss each other like ships passing in the night there. I mean, there's two of them there as well. I don't think he knew about the Havana off towards the left. NJR could have done some real damage if I-9 had gone aggressive, but instead opted to go more defensive and has been rewarded for it. Keeps his life for now. And he's rocking that FMG for us, uh, just to my point out. Haven't seen that one for a while. As Pamba brought down like a clay pigeon, shot out the sky, and like Lycola with the finish off a trade into one and Gavani now spins on a dime trying to catch Lycolis up inside tier three but that is such a headache because I'm pretty sure now I'm a liner man I thought the diffuser was down but it's in Canadian's back pocket well, okay. <laughs> the thing is, though, Pamba's a little bit unfortunate. He spent so much time watching that angle, but I think like always has just played it. The thing is, Fury will have watched Dark Zero against G2 earlier, so they will have seen them play Oregon today. They'll know that Pamba deal, right? is going to zip into T3, and like always just taking full advantage of that. I-9 knows the fight is coming, but cannot win it. NJR is just that bit better in that fight. Four versus three now, 30 seconds left to go, but they have Attic. Fury could well hold on. On, but the plant is likely to be coming inside a kitchen. Canadian's moving in. Security is safe, so he's going to try to stick this. Well, Lycolis needs to go aggressive here as well, and as we saw Crit try and work his way back in, attack, it simply attack. is not good enough. Lycolis coming in for one. Can't hit his shots. Gaveni finds what he needs. Even Canadian won't be finished off here. Now, Gaveni is low, but BG Man is playing against verticals, Tim. He might have 35 seconds, uh, counting 10 seconds, I guess, for planting the, uh, defa saving the diffuser. There's simply no time left at all. BG Man trying to see what he can find here. May well finish off a couple of consolation kills, but it's a comfortable closeout for the side of Dark Zero. 2-1 to Fury. Yeah, pretty much exactly what we would have expected out of Oregon so far. Uh, Fury is the defenders. You would expect to win laundry. You'd expect to win dorms. And then the third choice site. Well, the attackers would usually pick that up. So everything pretty much going according to script at the minute, as you would expect. So Fury, they're going to be looking now. They have to close this out 4-2. They need to take laundry again. They need to lock down dorms again. They've got to get those two. If they get the third choice, it's the bonus. It's the 5 one half. Half. Dark Zero, they're going to be looking to steal away one of these primary sites. If they do that, I'm concerned for Fury at that point. Attackers are it's again in these more consistent moments, I think, from Dark Zero, when you're seeing the kind of team structure coming together, the crossfires they've got set up, the slow and steady, patient approach towards an execute. They do look far more composed Bomb and there's more intricate moments of siege. But it's when Fury just seems to run away with things and build a bit of momentum that it's really difficult to contain them in place. Still at two and one, it's still wide open as to who can walk away with this. Down we go, go then for the fourth round, back into the basement. Mirror on side, Goyo on side, but this Five time round, left. no Kaid. Instead, it's a Wamai being brought along by Lycolis. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Dark is on the mirror, uh, so still going to have a fairly similar setup to the one that we saw before. Just looking to hold him out of bunker. To be fair, Dark Zero didn't push into bunker <laughs> at Tim, all. Tim, they've gone to overtime, by the way. Have they really? Third map overtime between Bliss. Oh my, oh my. Exciting stuff. Whether we will Jack get to enjoy the same. At the chops. <laughs> Honestly, at the minute, we're kind of set up on a trajectory that could take us towards the same. If you only get the next two rounds, lose the tertiary, go 4-2 in the half, you'd expect Dark Zero to do the same. 
Who knows? There's a long way to go yet. There's a lot of rounds to be played. Nine more to come before we can even think about getting to that point. But Pamba's going to take a bit of damage there on the knock, just dipping away into showers um, onto the drone just to see exactly what's gone on there. It will be the man at the top of uh, Freezer stairs, I'm sure, but he's just dipped himself back to a little bit of safety. It's a classic battle over top Freezer and security, and right now there is no one inside of security, which they'll now realise as they've got the gridlock of rice in behind that one. A little bit strange, really. You do normally see defenders holding in security with the hatch open and they'll waste a bit of time they'll slow down the push coming in from showers and then back away drop down through freezer in towards site and then they can set up another line of defense so giving up a little bit of map control for free there really now then i9 has managed to get himself Oh, nice no, he's come back down. I was going to say, he gets himself all the way up to T3. I'm not sure what he's seen that's dragged him back it's down. But I don't know if they know that he's there. The sound of the drone would suggest that they must now know. And he's going to get himself back down there. But I tell you what, for a second there, Dark Zero had some real peril facing them. Really have to praise Dark Zero, though, because, again, players like Gavenny instantly ready and watching the angle in case the push does come through. If I not committed towards that, praise to him for being disciplined enough to know when to back away and respect that he's been droned out. And a team like Dark Zero will punish you for that. Drops away back towards site, but both teams doing all the right things there to really react to that situation of a would-be Roma being caught out by a drone. Yeah, Dark Zero just looking to work rear stage stairs. They haven't got pillar cleared out yet. There's actually a three-man presence there. Uh, flash grenade Eight. utility going to be reined in. That's just trying to ensure that they can open Jesus. up the wall towards Shaiko. Um, Crit J is going to have to move himself away as that cell mid detonates, which it now will. So he needs to think about just exactly how he escapes. But given the fact that they haven't been able to open the whole thing up, he can crouch and just keep himself out of that line of sight. And then we'll get the full thing opened up they here will. as well with the second one coming through right in the middle, which will make that Shaiko spot nigh on unplayable. Pamba's really got to find his man. Please tell me. Please tell me, I9. You know that someone's trying to shoot you. Seems to have the idea, but Canadian just walks in with the supernova. Explodes all over them. BG1 back. Gabeni another. It's 1-2. One, 1-2 two, one, two between these two teams. Into a 3 versus 3. Canadian getting away by the skin of his teeth. Three players on half HP here, Tim. And Dark Zero have only got 15 seconds to make the push work. The Goyo canister is going to block off all of Highway. They've got to flood the site. Canadian gets one. BG man is down. Dark Zero have done it, winning the 3v3 and bringing things all square. That's a really big round for Dark Zero to be winning, as I said. You know, getting in there, getting one of those primary sites. If that happened, I was a little bit worried about Fury because what it kind of does now, if we look at the longer term um, trajectory of this map, is now... Dark Zero don't really need to do much other than win the third site. It's, they can go in there. They're going to have to play those primary sites again. They need to win both of them now. Back to back to Fury. The pressure starts to mount. They don't have any room for mistakes on defense now. If Dark Zero can take another one of them and guarantee the three, they start looking towards it thinking, yeah, we're confident we can lock down Laundry and Dorms twice over and we get the game done. So Fury, for the first time, I feel like really being pushed onto the back foot a little bit in terms of the overall fixture. Yes, they were put in pressure in map two, but they had that cushion. They had that one map advantage. Uh, that's no longer the case. Supernova is such a filthy shock. And silence, it's even worse. It feels like it's going to just, like, tickle you. But it's dangerously deadly, even silenced. <laughs> As I'm pretty sure most of Fury just found out. Canadian yeah, having a real field day charging through the map with it in back pocket. The funniest thing is, I know that like, shotgun's been buffed, but I think back two or three years, we had a lot of players in APAC playing shotguns like the Supernova pretty consistently and just running around with the secondary SMG to do the work that they needed to. So just it's just crazy now seeing it all become so popular and really that the cycle has completed itself. APAC were ahead of their time. Certainly were. Uh, we're <laughs> going to be going to Dorms. Fury deciding to move on. They Seven, don't want to try wolves. laundry again. And uh, they're going to be looking to keep hold of the top floor. Pamba is underneath. I'm not sure he's been drawn out here. There is certainly drones racing around, but I'm not uh, certain whether they're down in basement or not. So Pamba could have a real opportunity here to create a little bit of a surprise. Um, I don't know if they're finding ahead of him or not. He's going to oh, look up them stairs. I don't think R9's aware, but is he aware that R9's there? That's going to be the question. Question. He's on the cams at the minute. This could be an absolute freebie for Pamba to kick things off. If he just walks up a little bit further. Oh, I've not even had some shots back onto him first, but Pamba, as I think we said so many times this series, wins out the 1v1 against i9. This map in particular, i9 really struggling to get himself involved. He had some big moments on the previous map, but here, not so many.
Fury may prove me wrong, but I just get a feeling that this whole thing has swung towards Dark Zero here. They've got uh, the wind in their sails, Des, and it just feels like they're not going to be beaten. They're just starting to take fight after fight, and that will lead to round after round. Crit J is going to be drawn out on the Solis. They know exactly where he is. The pressure Nade. is on. He's trying Nade. to move through security. Yeah. There goes the nade. It was cooked, but not long enough. Crit J just escapes and manages to find the kill. Fury are fighting back. He levels Things up with a four versus four now taking down Gavini. One minute, 15 left to go. Dark Zero still need to deal with security. Oh, let's see what close he saw his head as well, but he's being pinched below at the same time and the knuck was there. Great read by Pamba to get the close down and really deny that ability to drop away. Once again, Dark Zero have the numbers advantage, but Tim, it hasn't come with 20 to 30 seconds on the clock. This has come with still 60 seconds to play. That's it, there's still an age yet. Pamba Zoo gets himself in. NJR actually beats him to the punch. Finds the kill first. Three versus one. BG man, he gets a big kill. Puts the diffuser down outside of the window. They have to come no, to him. BG. Just one. Could this be a one versus three? He peeks around. He looks for the shot, but no. He's going to force them to come to him. Pamba knows exactly where he is. 30 seconds. Oh, he's going to creep his way forward here as well. Smoke comes out. He doesn't know that he's going to get pinched on one side here as well. He's looking the right way, the wrong way. Now's not quite sure where to go on the left. Oh, BG yeah. man with a one beat. To take it over the line for Fury. Fury desperately needed BG Man to step up and be that star player that he showed us back in map one. And boy, did he deliver one versus three. Fantastic clutch from him to get Fury back on the front foot. Three, two now. They have one more round. They will almost certainly go back to Laundry to give it another try. And they can rescue that 4-2 that they were looking for. Whew. Something's going on. <laughs> Round 15? They're going to max OT! <laughs> that could be us in about 15 minutes' time. Certainly. Fresh gets his bingo card though. In playings, doesn't even need Swiss or the main stage. Too easy for him. Too easy for him at that point. What a clutch this was from BG Man. Just absolutely getting those huge. first two kills were absolutely massive. But then just the way he plays this 1v1 perfectly, using the smoke, forcing Pamba to one side and then ducking to the other and finding that final kill. It gives them another opportunity down in laundry. However, Dark Zero were very good at attacking this last time around. Fury. They they're going to have to do something differently. They can't let Dark Zero play their same game here because it will likely be the same outcome. And I just have a feeling that if Dark Zero can grab the 3-3 half here, Des, that could be too much for Fury to overcome on the attack. Could well be. Let's find that. Apparently, we've got a pip coming in as well for the beat. So we can see that. If we can get that in, I'll absolutely love it. Whew. It's just one of those where you've got to know what happens over there. If Wolves get knocked out, one of the big teams are going home. Bliss and Fury, not forgetting, if they win their series, they qualify for SI. All they had to do was make it through to Swiss, and they are locking themselves in. It could be coming down to that. Here we go then, Pamba is looking towards Freezer already. Pamba's been playing seriously quickly here on Oregon on the attack. We've seen a couple of times, we actually saw it back on Clubhouse as well, where he would just get himself quickly into positions that can be difficult for the defenders to deal with. He actually heads back up after taking out that cam, just decides that there's work to be done elsewhere. <sighs> okay then. Ready and waiting here as well. Pamba has that inkling. Or at least the knowledge, as you saw a drone skirting around in tier three as to what was going on. It's going to be Crit Jade poking his head around, not wanting to go too deep on this one. Wants to pick up a drone or two and then back down towards the site. Drone still running around above Pamba's head here to make sure there are no more hijinks coming out from I-9 in tier three. And sure enough, he is not going to be found up there as I believe he is down on site. Drones still raining around, it's the halfway mark, so we just have that quite often in siege rounds. You'll have all that drawn in at the beginning, gather the intel, get into position, then drawn again at the halfway mark just to see how things have adjusted, how the defenders have adapted, where things have moved. A lot of parts that are switching places here, and Dark Zero just wanting to make sure they've got a thorough understanding of what's going on. They're looking to clear out electrical once again, I think. BG Man is going to be playing from inside of Bunker this time. Crit J is over by Pillar rather rather than by Shaiko, so that's not going to be too much of a problem for Fury if they try to go for that electrical drop and get a kill. Crit J picks up Pamba, exactly the start that Fury needed.
Pamba's been a bit of a menace as we've seen throughout not just this series, but also earlier on against G2. So RD is the ideal target man for you to remove so early in the round. You know, Crit J and, and BG Man building up to be those two players that could be the hero makers in this series for Fury. Kingmakers, you may well turn out to call them. Canadian getting ready for the drop here as well. Smoke, it lands on the hatch, doesn't go through. Not super ideal, but in they go as well. Landing into a, a furious fire coming out from Crit, but no kills coming on through. Lycola's finding one. Crit hits the deck. One more goes down in the form of Rice. It's two versus two, but everyone's so low on the side of Dark Zero. Canadian's done all the hard work that he can, but they've got to make the plant happen. NJR is in, but what can Dark do? He's in a spot here to do a bit of work. Are they going to start sticking? No! Canadian wasn't in the right spot. Boy, oh boy. Fury managed to get the job done. We've got it. And this is it, because this is coming to the bitter end now. This is perfect timing, Tim. It's the last 30 seconds. We can't cast over the yes, top we can. of there, no, we can't. <laughs> can they, you can't hear them anyway, it's fine. You've got to do it. I cannot do You've it. You've got do to. It. <laughs> well, to be fair, no, because they're casting behind us as well. But by the looks of it, Wolves are just about to do it here. They tried so valiantly as Bliss well. Bliss was so close. The thing is, on paper now, everyone will look at that and go, ah, oh, APAT team didn't make it through, lol. They've made it to map three, round 15. That is one hell. It's an achievement. <laughs> Just it is an achievement. special, that. It's, I'm sure Look at gonna... Pippa's reaction. He's on the floor. I'm sure it's not going to feel like them for them, but, uh, you know, one way or another, Bliss have got to take away the positive from that, that they really have stretched what could be, um, you know, one, a world-leading team, really, in Wolves. They've stretched them all the way to the, the very end there, but Wolves just managing to get the job done. And who knows, there's in about 15, 20 minutes, we might find ourselves in a very similar position here between Fury and Dark Zero. At the minute, Fury have taken the first half, 4-2 on the defence. It moves Dark Zero onto the defence, but what it does is it means Dark Zero have to lock down laundry and dorms realistically and if they want to win it in regulation oh they also boy. need to find a win on one of those third choice sites well we've got a round we've got a blitz coming out this could be pretty spicy for a first attacking round coming out of fury i want to give it a couple of rounds before we get too excited about the possibility of them running too far ahead we saw what happened on that last map again four rounds in a row being won by dark zero pamba the one now looking to challenge immediately around this tier three with canadian helping out from below Question is, do Fury really care about getting tier three control here? I'm not 100% sure they do. Because right now, everyone else seems posted towards different angles. Construction, it's a four-man rush, Tim. Are you ready? Chugga, 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 chugga. <laughs> here it comes. We're just waiting. NJR's got himself really close up here. If he times this right, he might actually be able to put the brakes on this rush. There's no putting brakes on this train, Tim. Out goes the toxic babe canister. It's as if NJR knows. He waits for it to go. Is he going to trigger it? No, it's too He's late. Dead. But he gets the kill on to the blitz dog does go in and find one. one it's going an absolute crazy pace two versus two three kills on either side and all of a sudden we have a pause we've got the diffuser oh, wow. down bg man is stuck out in no man's land crit j is inside a site what is gonna happen here i don't know if pamba knows that no one's inside or if he assumes they're outside still or what they've got a ping in they know where at least one is but the others they don't know at this point no one moving yet both crit and bg man taking their time here because the blessing is tim there's still half a Round to play. Immediately, Canadian charges on through and Crit finds his man. Pamba to be the hero, wins the one. We picked up both of these players so much and this could be such a critical turning point. Either it's 4-3 or it's 5-2. The, the Bulletproof seeing almost everything there as well. And Crit, as I've said, has got so much time to play with, Tim. Pamba, I think probably he is that diffuser going down, does he? No, he's not going to push. He's going to wait. He knows where oh, the man is. Got it. It's a shotgun shot to the Let's chest go. to take him down, and Pamba plays it perfectly. Holds on there to bring it to four and three. As I said, it could have been five two to Fury, and at that point, you feel like the game may have just ran away from Dark Zero. But what a first attacking round to kick off the second half. What a start. That just signals exactly how intense this end is going to be between Dark Zero and Fury. I've got to give it to Fury because, like I said, Dark Zero have to hold on to those primary sites, really. So give it a shot. You know, roll the dice. You're not really expecting necessarily for that to be the site that you win anyway. So let's just rush in. Let's see what we can get out of it. Maybe you catch them by surprise and then all of a sudden you're 5-2 up and it's not looking good for Dark Zero. Fury, a worthwhile effort, but they 
just couldn't get it over the line. His feet here as well. Yeah. Perfect from NJR. I think he knew that Good it was trade. coming. It was a great read. And Dark gets two off the back of it as well. He gets the initial trade, then gets the, the further killing towards Freezer as well. So it was, I guess, in a way, a successful push coming on through. The fact it came down to that two versus two and Pamba has to put out a big 1v2. Again, just shows how close this series has been. Plenty more to come, I'm sure, as we step into round eight and we head up to that top floor. I imagine we probably have a lot of the B stream joining us as well. Um, if not now, then very soon, um, knowing that the other game has resolved itself. Um, so welcome on in if you have joined us from over there. You find us in map three. It's just as close as the one you've come from. So if you thought you were just coming over to relax after the Wolves and Bliss game and finish off your day in peace, well, <laughs> you've come to the wrong place because we're on map three. It's 4-3 Fury. They went 4-2 in the first half. That was their first attacking round. Dark Zero got it one, but we could be on course for a very similar finish to the one we saw on the B stream. Oh yeah, it's feeling exactly the same kind of energy, isn't it? I don't think they are just yet, they're still wrapping up over there. When they do come in, we'll let you know. For now, still just us and this tantalizing fixture that it's turned out to be. As things are setting up, then a very big focus on towards Big Window. Canadian skulking around down in the basement on that Solus. Bit of a bit of a headache throughout the series. Hasn't really picked up too many drones so far, so Fury doing a better job here of holding onto drones than they have done in previous matches where we've seen them burn through, you know, four or five very quickly to a Solus, and it's like, look, you know there's a Solus on side, guys. What are you doing? So we are seeing that evolution of the team across these two days as well. Drones are going to be going in ahead. Fury just trying to gather as much intel as they can, of course. Canadian, though, will know that that is happening. We'll be able to pick up potentially from where those drones are sort of kicking <laughs> off if he sees them going down. Nice. Indeed. Um, he will be able to give an idea of where that push is coming from. He can sort of chart the progress of the drones across, and that's going to suggest where the sweep will start from. Canadian does take one out, looking for a challenge potentially um, towards those lower level players, but instead just avoids it. Just moving around at the minute, looking to get onto the flank if he can. He just wants a cheap kill and to get out of there, really. Realistically, that's the strength of the Solis. All right, I've uh, now heard that these stream are in and with us, so welcome to the party, guys. I know you just had a bit of a hell of one over there with that map three, max round OT. We're on the way towards a similar thing here, but chaos is reigning supreme across these few rounds. It's kill for kill for kill for kill, back and forth, but still a four versus three for Fury. Same as the scoreline, funnily enough, Tim. Diffuse is going down, though. Dark has managed to get himself into a position. Can he stick this? Gabeni's going to be taken out. This could be a critical round in terms of this matchup, Des. They've got the Diffuser down. It's four versus one. Canadian Ooh. fights back in. Manages to get a headshot. It's going to need to be a one versus four. Can't find another. As Dark manages to shut him down. And Fury, they go 5-3. Des, they're two rounds away from knocking Dark Zero out of the Atlanta Major. This could be happening. It very well could be, Tim, but I can't count Dark Zero zero out yet. The only way that round could have been more picture perfect would have been if it was <laughs> getting a kill onto Canadian lying at the top of White Stairs. The flashbacks came flooding in. But five and three, as you say, is exactly where the score line sits. A few nerves. Just going to be having a little bit of a I don't know if it's a timeout or if we're heading back into game, um, but we've got some replays for you. Uh, we can just see those final kills coming in. Crit J going to be taking uh, a couple down from the top of White Stairs. It was fantastic play from Fury, really, just seeing that opportunity and getting aggressive right into the middle of the site, able to get the diffuser down. Just had everything really on that attack. It's going to force Dark Zero to head back towards the same site. They're not going to go for their third choice. Instead, they are going to double down. Go for Dorms once again, but this is such a critical round for Dark Zero. They were unable to get it done, but I don't think Fury will get away with winning it in the same way. They got aggressive in through double window, got themselves inside a site, and were able to fight it. I don't think that's going to be able to um, happen again. Dark Zero, I would expect to be on top of that. I was just going to pick up on Canadian out in T3. You need to be aware of him. Could be a nuisance maker for them. The window is going to be opened, and I like how they've done that with I9 ready to strike. Sees his man but cannot find the kill. A good opportunity for Fury there, but no damage done as I-9 was dropping away. But another warning shot for Dark Zero as they just know they need to be careful of every single angle here. 
Uh, Corliss gets himself up onto the roof. He knows that Canadian's out there. Canadian's knocked that window out inside of T2 and just needs to be a little bit cautious because if he shows his face in there, I'm sure that Lycolis is going to take him down as he's just taken down the black eye camera. And that should be all the signal that Canadian needs, really, to tell him that pressure is coming towards that T2. I'm back. Apparently, the hype of the game can also blow up microphones, Tim. Who knew? <laughs> What we learned today. There'll be another couple that'll go by the end of this one, I'd imagine. It could very well do if the rounds keep on going the way that they have been so far. All right, then. Onwards in March, only half the round concluded. I hope your ears are all okay, by the way, guys. I do apologize. But almost in March, then. Mine did get a little bit of a beating. Yeah, I, yeah they get that every day you stood next to me, Tim. Onwards we go. In comes Crit trying to make a play happen, but can't find his man. Two kills answered out by Dark Zero. BG Man gets one back. We're seeing a lot of shorty kills this competition, it feels, by the way, Tim. An immediate trade coming back through. Honestly, Oregon, I've never seen one as crazy as this because across so many rounds now, we've just seen trade for trade for trade for trade, seemingly out of nowhere. Lots of explosions, lots of fire because of the amount of goy that we've seen. The two teams really just throwing haymakers at one another. They are. Like Corliss has got himself established inside of Attic. BG Man takes a tickle of damage. I'm not sure what that was from, but I don't think it was a bullet. He does take a little bit more as well. Um, BG Man just looking to push forward. It was a goo mine that had caught him initially. It has been removed now. Um, like, oh, it's actually out of the window. He's going to change up his angle of attack. 45 seconds left to go, so there's no problem with that, but Dark Zero are playing this. I think patience has been the word for Dark Zero, and they are trying to play it patiently again. A couple of drones still left available for BG Man. Imagine more here set up on the flank, but just catching out one would be absolutely magic for them. A great nade towards the bat, not going to find their man. Now we really get to see if this shotgun can do some work. A great shot coming in from Lycolis. Look towards your left, my friend. He's so close, but it's right in the corner. Not found. His man, Lycolis, finally gets the finish off. He could plant here if he wanted to, just inside of the rotate. But they've got to be so careful. The last two from Dark Zero are dug in, and there's only 15 seconds to play, Tim. NJR and Rice are both super low health, though. BG Man is going to go for the plant. He has the cover. Moving across. Oh, Beautiful Nitro, but it's taken out of the sky. Lycolis shoots it down and saves his man. Diffuser is activated and all of a sudden Dark Zero are on the back foot. Impact Nick goes out. There's not much that he can do. NJR Low Health down. doesn't want to take this gunfight. BG Man has every advantage. He's waiting for the push to come through. But no, that is super play from NJR to get that done. Dark Zero are going to be able to take the round. They've rescued it from the jaws of defeat there, Des. They were facing map and series point, but no, they snatch it back. It's 5-4. <laughs> Discussing exactly what went wrong there. I think Lycolis caught them off guards entirely. And we did see for a second, I think it was the castle that was just completely blindsided, super short at the hand. Just didn't really know what was going on on the window. Lycolis almost the hero of the moment, shooting that C4 out, but then not able to convert it into a kill, unfortunately, once it hit the deck. As I've said, these rounds have just been so ludicrously chaotic back and forth. It's like, oh, let's hear, look, cutting himself an absolute freebie. I imagine that was the miscom that Dark Zero were discussing amongst themselves after the round, but a perfect 2v1 being yeah. taken on to BG Beautiful. Man to close things out. Beautiful. I just called it at the end there. Rice had also got the down onto Lycolis elsewhere, I believe. Um, and it just created that situation where he was able to push from the trophy side. And NJR, um, you know, I called him as playing it perfectly there, and it was his patience that was perfect. He didn't push that too early. He was low health. One bullet from BG Man would have done it. And he really couldn't get too aggressive on that. He had to trust his teammate. He had to wait for Rice to be able to back him up. And Dark Zero have played that beautifully to keep themselves fighting here. So they may well have lost one of the primary sites, but then they've gone and locked it down. And all that means is that they don't necessarily need to play one of those third choices. We'll see as it goes on. If they win here in Laundry, then it will be the third choice site. And that's that could be Fury's opportunity. Ooh, all right. Still nice and tight at five and four. Still every chance it goes five, five. And we get guaranteed to see at least all 12, Tim. Fury still with a chance, though, to get a two round lead and put themselves onto match series and phase two point at this point. And you can call it. And for them, SI point, let's not forget. If they go on to win this, they make it to SI. That is the big victory point that no doubt they are looking for because that chance to play in February is really what all teams play for all year round. Of course it is. That is the big one. Um, you know, it's. 
Very much, I'm sure, a split loyalty. Everybody wants to win the major as well. Everybody wants to put themselves in that exclusive club that not many have been able to achieve over the years of Siege Esports. And Fury, they're going to want to keep on fighting here for that reason as well. But for the time being, they've got two more attacks that they need to win. Dark Zero, they're holding on for three defensive rounds. The thing is now, if Dark Zero want to win it in regulation time, they need to win Laundry. They need to win a third choice side and then they need to win dorms again. It's not going to be easy. It's just a small, small task, Tim. No big, no big deal. Anyone can do it at this point. It feels like maybe they can, especially with the Pamba party that we've been enjoying. Admittedly, a little bit quieter so far in the second half than what we saw previously. Gaveni himself has definitely awoken into the game, but it could be Troy with that plot armor that drags his team through currently. Alongside Crit, the only other player in the server sat on double-digit kills. Yeah, I just look at it and I think there's going to be an opportunity for Fury, surely, to push this to overtime at some point. You've got to feel with that third-choice site having to come into play, it is not it's going to be easy here. for Dark Zero. Um, they're just Look continuing the drone in. I think they're going to go straight into Freezer here. They're definitely stacking up for the drop. One, one. does go. Crit J moves in. Looks to get aggressive. Knows there's one on door. Just can't quite find him with the pre-fire. Loses the utility to the ADS as well. But full white flash on Gavene. It's all a little bit of a mess on the oh, Freezer shot. door. But Crit J manages to get a beautiful headshot to get things started. Toxic Babe will force him back. Still gets the hold of him. Got the juice that come out from I-9 here as well. Just topping up that tiny little bit. Got BG trying to work his way now back up around to work on the top side, expecting a flank to come through on things. The team have kind of started and execute and then backed out of it a little bit here. Dark gets one. Pamba coming in behind. Nine Nine's got no idea. Will he ever win a 1v1 against Pamba? It's got to be now. And he does just that. 5v2. Fury can move up to 6 4 here, Tim. It's Gaveni all by himself. Finds one, but the trade is there. Fury one round away from dismantling Dark Zero. And they will get two chances to secure this. It's 6-4 and they know just how much this means to them. The question now is, can Fury do it? Can they get themselves over the line, Des? One more round. That must be what is in their mind right now, but they are going to have to beat Dark Zero defences on the choice of sight, essentially. They can go back down to Laundry. They can try that primary sight again. Maybe Dark Zero feel it's time to roll the dice and go to a third choice. Who knows? But right now, the one thing that I do know is they've taken that tactical timeout. Again, it must be so heart-wrenching for them. I've mentioned it a few times, but thinking about the last time you were back on US soil, you know, they won the whole thing back in Charlotte. Now we're back here, they might not even make it to the top 16. You know, the majors of old only had 16 teams. These play-ins are a new thing, but to maybe not even get to that stage will be absolute heartbreak for them. But Fury... About to hand over that deceit, defeat. And again, so many came into this game saying that on paper, DZ should dismantle these guys 2-0. and zero. For a time, it looked like Fury might 2-0 them. Dark Zero battled their way back in through some heroic efforts coming out from the team. And Fury have now dragged it all the way back to the brink on their side. One round to go. I just don't know if Fury will be stopped now. That was, that was the feel of that round for me, is this is Fury grabbing a hold of this and saying, we don't care how hard you pull, we're going to win this tug of war. This is ours, we're going through to phase two. And it just feels like they've got so close, they can smell the blood in the water, they know that it's there, and all they need to do is bite down. And right now, Fury, they certainly look ready to do it. It's going to be basement, Des, and it's going to be Dark Zero to try and keep themselves in the Atlanta Major. Are they going to end up the casualties that I spoke about at the beginning of the day? Well, at this point, they're the only one remaining to be that casualty. Everyone else has managed to, for the most part, claw by through the skin of their teeth. Wolves doing it in round 15 of map three just 20 minutes ago or so. Here, Dark Zero, unfortunately, maybe that team that takes their place in the graveyard. For now, though, we've got to see Fury get through this round. Starting out looking in towards construction, I-9 onto yet another operator, this time round playing the Capital. Has flexed through a lot of them throughout this series and not always been top of the leaderboard. He certainly was a little bit earlier on, but as it stands in this game, it's more about the slight nuisance that he's having trying to deal with his 1v1s against Pamba that he's just not coming out on top of. 
So this is their first opportunity. They will at least get another, no matter what happens. Pambazu, he's going to make the dark zero. Fans happy, taking down like always. As you say, that is the Havana gone. There is nothing. There will be no hatches opened. That honestly could be the round right there for dark zero. This is going to be difficult for Fury. This is why so many teams bring along that secondary hard breacher in the form of normally hard breach gadgets in the back pocket, but they've not bothered here. They've gone for claymores instead for I-9. You're looking at that and just thinking, that could have been the real saving grace for you here. Instead, they're going to have to Hail Mary this in some way, shape, or form. And obviously, I don't think Darks are at this point know that they aren't facing off against any of the hard breachers. Maybe they assume that I-9 has got some in back pocket, for example. But this is a real blessing in disguise for them. And it's the second time this series that we've seen Fury have a bit of a comp issue where they haven't brought along EMPs, even secondary ones, for example, when a Kaid's online. Here, they've only got the one hard breacher, and they will pay the price for it. Here we go then, into the second half. Dark Zero just trying to play the information game, trying to get an idea of where this push is coming from. They will Boy. likely not know that the hatches are secure. Overextension right. Why? there from Pambazu, trying to pick up, trying to give them the advantage, but all he does is level the playing field as Dark is able to pick up the kill. Four versus four, a minute still left on the clock. They will be kicking themselves. If they have a round where all three hatches stay fully reinforced and they still lose the round because they get a little bit too excited, a little bit too keen to be the hero in the moment, but instead sees the team pushed all the way back. They're starting on their march forward. It's I-9 working his way in towards construction side, in towards blue, and Dark looking to join him on the other side here. Their march forward begins, team. Tim, can they do it now? This could be really dangerous for Dark Zero. Having lost pillar and electrical control, the hatches sort of become a lot less important. Oh, Fury, they start to push forward. 30 seconds left to go. Rice just peppering them from inside of Freezer, unable to find any real damage, though. Dark knows exactly where that was coming from. Rice doesn't want to overextend and now learns Pamba's lesson, essentially, and he's just going to hold this angle. 15 seconds left to go. They've just pulled all the way back, and you can see them all dug in down towards the south side here. Smokes come out. Dark comes on through. Canadian finds one. They're trying to make it happen. One kill comes in. NGR into another. It feels like they'll hold on here, Tim. Up to six and five, and we're guaranteed to see all 12. That's it, and now Dark Zero have got a choice to make. Dorms is available. It hasn't been the best site for them defensively. Do they go there or do they take a third choice site? Do they go to meeting? Do they go to dining? We'll be finding out real, real soon, but the cogs are going to be turning in the Dark Zero minds at the minute as to just what the best option is. They need to lock in, they need to commit, and they need to get this done if they want to continue fighting in Atlanta. Fury, one more round but it's not going to come easily. <sighs> Let's all take a big breath. None more so than Dart Zero. Because this is their last chance, as we keep on saying, for Fury. They win this one. They make it through. They lose this one. What are we doing, Tim, if they lose this one? Well, we'll see when that happens. What's the word, Tim? Oh, you don't get the words early. You can't tease me like this. You don't get the words early, Des. We only get the words if, if, if that happens. <laughs> I almost said it then. Uh, <laughs> Imagine if you just baited yourself into it. I would have. Oh, it was it. very close. I'll be honest. All right. Well, let's keep holding on then. Pamba out again on this Solus, looking to cause a bit of bothering towards three. drones. And already, by the looks of it, three dead on the side of Fury. Potentially four here. Left. Sometimes it looks out a bit. You're not 100% sure. You'll get the final answer in about two seconds' time. How many are left alive? Yeah, it's seven. Bomb, okay, no, it's it. six. As another one is taken down. So four drones gone in drone phase. I praised them earlier on for really good drone preservation. Here losing four, that's basically a disaster as far as prep bases go. Yep. Answering my question about the site choice as well, Dark Zero have opted to go for something a little bit of a different flavour. They've gone up for meetings, so they're going to have to try and hold on to top floor. Of course, Dorms is still going to be a little bit of a battleground because they want that vertical superiority here, Will Fury. And like always, is already heading in that direction. But with Diffuser in hand, needs to be careful. Doesn't really want to be the first one inside of the map. He's going to put the Claymore down just to prevent any jump out. May well choose to get himself Pamela onto the that. drones then to support others in going in. Pamela will have seen that though as well, playing on the solo. You have the option and ability to do just that. Himself, they've been flagged out at least a little bit there by his uncle Cuss by the looks of it. Trying to find their way inside big window. Not 100% confident to go for that push just yet. There's kind of this lateral push going in below and two trying to take control upstairs. But two or three players from Dark Zero, all grouped around kids on the top floor, ready to, to fight over this tooth and nail. 
have the due diligence being played. The Nomad getting the air jabs out, just watching Peel for back. the flanks, making sure that they don't give anything soft away. They've got the gridlock as well. They really do not want um, to have Dark Zero coming down and surprising them. They've got themselves pretty well established here with Fury. They can continue to push upstairs. I9's looking to get aggressive and move in. There is one inside of Kid Stones, but he needs to be careful because he's going to find himself in a crossfire here. Canadian could well have a little bit of a field day. I9 pushes in. He's no idea. Oh. He's giving himself away as a freebie to Canadian. That is the first blow dealt, and it goes to Dark Zero. See the feet as well. Shoot those feet. He's get them toe shots in. Out he goes. Canadian taken down. Not before he's taken his first victim, of course, in the form of I9. A bit too much for Alliance on those Bs coming out from Lycolis there, I'm afraid. But still, rebalance to 4v4 with 60 seconds to play, Tim. Fury, they need to be finding some more kills. That much is for sure. Time is ticking by. They don't want any extras here, Des. They don't want any add-ons. They want to get it done here. And now, 45 seconds left to go. Pamba's got himself down into the basement on the soul. It's just looking for any information, but there's oh, none to be found. knows. If he comes around this corner, he's going to lose his life. No. It's a freebie. That's advantage. Lose. Fury, Des. But no, it gets leveled up. Dark Zero snap back quicker than an expensive tape measure like Collis. He's trying to get this down. He's going to stick it, Des. He's managed to get away with it. Advantage Fury again. Two left to go as well. It's both Dark and BG, and they've got the vertical. Dark Zero, they need to retake this. The answer is sending two upstairs to make sure you at least guarantee the trade. But right now, no one seems to be anywhere nearby. There's a soul man coming down from Attic. Yaveni has got to be the hero. Just trying to move through NJR relocating. They've got to find kill. No, no, no. Dark, he finds one of three. Dark just trying to hold on from above. Eight seconds left to go. Rice is on one. the diffuser. He's had to come they've up. Got away with they've it. got what they needed. And they've got the time. Des, we're going to overtime. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dark Zero. Three more rounds to go. Potentially a minimum of two, max of three. It's just what these game, these guys need. Just what this game needs as well. Well, when you, <laughs> I, and medics team up, there only tends to be <laughs> one outcome, and that is third round overtime. The only question now is third really heard map an overtime. Side down our from medics. The well. only question now for Fresher's bingo card, at least, is. Do we get all 15? Do we get all 15? It's been 4-2 in both halves in favor of the defenders. This has been a very defender-sided Oregon so oh. far. But there's been upsets along the way. Primary oh sites have still been won. It's been very much a roller coaster ride. What a finish to regulation time from Dark Zero. Their fury was so close. They kept getting that toe in front, that diffuser down, that step closer to phase two. But Dark Zero doggedly behind them at every turn, ready with the answer, ready with the next kill, ready to disable the diffuser. Take us in to round. Round 13. Dark was so close to being Five the hero for remaining. Fury there as oh, well. He really to take, was. To take the tie team through, he was that close. It's unfortunate as well because I think it was BG Man who was coming around for the final firefight. He got killed by the MP5K spray. It wasn't even targeted. He just spun on a dime and just sprayed in towards dining and managed to find him. But enough time on the clock and three or four seconds extra. My God, was it close. Fury on the attack inside here, marching on their way through. We'll see if they can pull this off. Really a continuation of what we've just had for the last six rounds. A big start in towards Trophy side here. And they this want to catch up a couple of these Romans. How on earth has he won that one? Canadian out belly with his gun showing. But crits there for the trade. That almost hero of last round. Dark is taken out. But Canadian is balanced out on the Solus. And he's top fragging, Tim. He's at 13 kills. I was just looking across the uh, the number of kills. And they're so even across the teams. Yeah. There's been so many players stepping up here. This is by no means a one-man show on I either side. This is exactly what you want to see out of a game of Siege. It's tantalizing, Des. Everybody is contributing. Everybody is pulling their team towards that position that they want. Yeah. But Pamba gets himself a freebie onto Crit, who just walks that bit too far, gives himself away. Gavini, he's still upstairs. He's still going to prove a nuisance. Fury, they're looking to move downstairs. They're looking to go direct to site, but you can't do this. You've got to make sure that you've got those flanks covered off. You've got to go fast if you're going to go at all here. I don't know if they know about Lycolis being this close. There's also I-9 coming in, in tow. 
really that only leaves BG. They're in silence at least for now. He's coming down the other side towards Laundry Stairs. So it's very heavily a south side push. Now Dark Zero, no, that Firebolt really not going to help by nine. It's only going to slow your push forwards. And where is Gavirne? That is the big question. Oh, he's actually come back down rear stage stairs. It was potentially an opportunity, but no, he's not been able to get onto the flank. So the lines are drawn one way or another. One of these two teams is going to come out with a win, but it's going to be from these positions. There's the cut down from Rice. Manages to find like always. Four versus two now, Dark Zero. Managed to take themselves a lead. They are four versus two. They're in the ascendancy on the defense. Just all they've got to do is hold in these numbers as well. 4v2. This is 100% doable. I know BG's been having a great game, but I9, as I've mentioned a few times, not hitting those big shots when it's needed in this game and really blocking Lycolis out there from making a march on forward. The fire, it's not ideal in that kind of situation. They've at least seen three of them. They know now where the last one is as well on the rotate. They know where every single player is. This is a real challenge because DZ can just plant their feet and let you come pushing into them. That's it, they really don't need to overextend here, don't need to take a peek. There's 18 seconds left to go. They can wait for you to move into their line of sight. That's exactly what Rice does. Shuts down BG Man, it's all up to I9. One versus four, 10 seconds, highly unlikely. He's looking for anything he can get, but it's gonna be Pamba to close it out. Who else? And that is gonna be Dark Zero taking the first of the overtime rounds. They just need one more, Des, but but Fury move on to the defense. They have a slight advantage in round 14, but can they cling on? Can they keep themselves going all the way to the final round? Freedom sounds intensify, Tim. DZ aren't going home if this carries on at this pace, and that's exactly why Fury are taking in this tack time out. A quick 40 second pause, a breather. Time for discussion. You can hear the coach weighing in as well. They've got to make this work. Now, that was the defense of the downstairs. It is a little bit of a fortress, as mentioned earlier on in this map. I imagine we'll see Fury go for the same, unless they've got something the same. crazy to bring out, which then begs that question of what happens when we go into round 15 with Dark Zero on the defense, not able to play in the basement. To be fair, they defended Laundry three times, did Fury, in the first half. They won it twice, 66% win rate. They didn't win meetings, so I don't think they're going to go to their third choice site, but they didn't lose dorms. They won that twice. So honestly, it wouldn't surprise me too much to see Fury go up to that top floor. You know, they've got the 100% win rate inside of this game. There is a possibility there that they think, you know, the shadow of that lost round on Laundry might loom over them and just push them up to the top floor instead. We'll see as we load in, but no, they are going to go downstairs. They're confident that whatever Dark Zero did to win that one Laundry attack, that they're not going to be able to do it again. Very dug in comp as well. I know back on Clubhouse, we saw these roaming setups coming out from Fury when they were defending the basement. Here in Oregon, it is locked down, hunker down. Get the siren sound in, be ready for the assault coming in from Dark Zero. But the thing is, when Dark Zero are given a lot of time, as we've seen time and time again, when they get five or even four players ready for the execute, they are so good at executing as a cohesive unit. I think here, if Fury dig in a bit too close, they're just gonna leave this open for Dark Zero to walk in and take round 14 and take that spot going into phase two and ultimately deny Fury that spot at SI. Fury, they could be three minutes away, Des, from heartbreak or from renewed hope of having that final round, that final opportunity. And we're about to find out. NJR opens up the main door to get things underway. They've got the Thatcher, they've got everything they need, the double hard breach to get the hatches open. Dark Zero shouldn't really come across too many stumbling blocks on getting themselves towards sight, at least. We've got... At least, no, we've got everybody on site for Fury. Um, Crit J was just off on Freezer stairs, but I-9, we saw this from him before. Tried to get himself hidden away in tier three. Leaves it until sort of late into the round almost, really. <laughs> Not the prep phase. And I tell you what, he hasn't done it yet. It sounds so Dark Zero might just miss this. He is your zero and six Jaeger in ranked. He's like, guys, I can still do this on the round. Don't worry. I can still get the kills. It's fine. But there's a bit of you that just thinks, you know what? He might just. Ah, oh, Gavenny's gone for him. 
He might be in trouble here. He's it in mean... big trouble. If this drone finds him, he is in big trouble because there's no way out. He's going to be it's stuck. Gone. They know that he's there. So but now... he can just watch the stairs, but they don't have to do anything, you see. Advantage. They can just hold on. But elsewhere... Oh, Critchier gets one. Critchier gets two. Canadian and Rice get taken out at the top of Freezer stairs. Rice gets put on ice, and Critchier has just given Fury a lifeline. Oh, I spoke about this guy so much over the last couple of days. This young gunner that picked up. We hear about teams wanting more firepower. So they go for these young players that take a little bit of time to settle in. But Crits at 15 kills on the map, Tim. When it counts most, he is stepping up. They're on the march on Ford. Pamba has found one. Lycoris falls. The assault begins. Do they know the cross is there? BJ Man finds his man. Still two left for Dark Zero. It's not over just yet. NJR getting rid of I-9, who again, I'm sorry, my man, but you are that guy from ranked. Two left standing, and Dark Zero have taken a 2v4 down to a two versus two. Both grouped up so tight. Still a minute to play and still drone work to be done. It feels like Dark's a little bit trapped. I don't think he dares Mike take the down. animation to get back through the rotation because it's not a walkthrough animation. It's a, it's not a walkthrough rotation. It's a vault to get back in from elbow. So I think he's just a little bit concerned about that. NJR's got the read. He's got the angle. Dark's going to have to keep himself in that position. Crit J's locked inside of the closet. It's two versus two. It's 30 seconds left to go. Dark zero. They're going to have to get aggressive. They can't can't wait forever, they need on. to take the fights. NJR knows roughly where Dark is, but doesn't realize that he's on the far side of the reinforcement. He comes around, he's looking for Crit J. Crit J moves himself out. They're just wheels moving around each other, Des. They've got to find something here, but those cameras have come back online and shown everything. Crit's into a 3K in the round. Can he make it four to take us to 15? Yes, he can, Tim. We're going all the way. I cannot get enough of this game. And unfortunately for us all, we're only going to get one more round in the next three minutes. We will decide one way or another who will progress here at the Atlanta Major. Will it be Fury or will it be Dark Zero? Will it be an upset or will it be the pre-match expectation? We will see as we progress. Dark Zero, you would have to say, have the slight advantage here. They on go the back onto defense and that has been the winning side here on Oregon so far. But do not count Fury out. They have shown time and time again through this matchup that they are able to deliver. Who would have had this down? It's almost like it's scripted, Tim. Two well-known tier one teams, Dark Zero Wolves, being taken all the way through to map three, round 15, by teams that many would have written off and dismissed and said they'll never be able to take a team that far. Here they are doing it, not just in best of ones, but in best of threes, Tim. This is what it comes down to. There's nothing left. No! No, not like this! <laughs> oh, and then he's just like, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> Don't worry, so don't pretty. worry. The game has stopped as well. Yes. You are going to miss nothing. Oh, Troy wants to get this over and done with, man. Guy's got to piss. <sighs> well, if the tension wasn't already high enough. Now you know there's a full bladder on the line as well. <laughs> well, exactly that. So we move on. We take oh. a little bit of time to reflect here whilst we get this lobby restarted and get everybody in. You know, let's remind everybody at home of the stakes here. You may have joined us from the B stream. You might have watched that Wolves Bliss game earlier. The stakes here, of course, are exactly the same. Anybody who loses, whichever team loses, goes home they leave the Atlanta major but there's a bit more on the line for Fury as well if they get the win here and get themselves through to phase two they also get themselves through to the six invitational so there is a lot for them to play for and they are going to give it everything I'm certain but they're going to have to do what both of these teams have struggled to do so far and that is to win an attack it was a 4-2 defensive half to start with for Fury it was a responsive 4-2 defensive half for Dark Zero and then both defensive rounds have been won in overtime. So you've got to say that the chips are stacked in Dark Zero's favour at the minute. I know the players look pretty composed, so at least most of them. Like Oles, maybe a bit less so. But just knowing that you're sat at this precipice, this final round, and you can't talk to your teammates, you've just got to sit there with your own thoughts. Must be about... very lonely at this oh. point in yeah. some ways. All you can do is just shoot nervous glances around, even Troy. You know, look at him, even he's so locked in, he knows what this means. And uh, that contemplation, you hope it doesn't knock any confidence or the adrenaline doesn't start to wear off, for example, that they can keep it up. 
But this is going to be a round 15 of all round 15s, Tim. <sighs> and this is only phase one, Des. I know, I know. This is only phase one. We've got phase two. We've got I'm, I'm phase got a couple three. Because my throat's ready to be like, yo, stop. <laughs> We've no games tomorrow. So we can uh, we can have a little bit of a, a rest of the old voice tomorrow. Don't worry. Um, but uh, don't you worry at home. We're not going to save a single thing for our voices. We're going to give you absolutely everything, just like these two teams are going to. It looks like, um, I'm guessing from player responses, that we're going to be getting in fairly soon, I think. Um, not 100% sure. Um, it looks yeah. like, yep, yeah, I think it looks like we're going to be loading back in anytime soon. They're making sure that the energy is up. Um, they need to come in here strong, come in here confident, knowing that they can get this done. I just don't know I wanted to do it more. It feels weird to have a major, especially again in the US, without Dark Zero present. But you love an we love an underdog story. Absolutely love it. I mean, any fans less so. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would completely say, you know, I don't want to lose Dark Zero. I don't want, you know, Canadians. All right, it's not just about Canadian, but he's given us so many laughs so far. You know, I don't want to lose those moments either. But then, yeah, on the flip side, what a story for Fury to continue on here. As you say, you know, we we were in the coach with them last night. They were, you know, such a nice set of guys. They were so hyped up at their win. Um, you know that. It's difficult to not want them to win either. You know, it's like, is there any way for both of these teams to win? And the unfortunate answer is, no, there's not. We're in competition here, and one of them is going to go. They are. I'm always feeling like you. I don't want anyone to go home, Tim. They're all winners here. That's, you know, sometimes <laughs> I fall into that trap. Softening my it's... ice cold heart. Yeah. That's why I was the angel yesterday to your devil. <laughs> Uh, I've still got some uh, red makeup in my ears, it turned out earlier, as the makeup artist pointed out to me. <laughs> and I was like, look, I'm not being funny, but I'm not exactly getting a shower head and just like shoving it down my ear to try and clear it out. That's how hard this works. That's how you hurt yourself and potentially deafen yourself. <sighs> oh. oh dear. Right. We will be back in as soon as we can be. It does look like everybody's sort of shaping up towards their computers. We can only guess as much as you can for this bit. Um, but everybody's hands are on keyboards and mice, and I think uh, it looks like we're going to be heading back in any second now. So just to remind everybody, this is round 15 of map three, best of three. It is down to this. Everything that has come before is borderline irrelevant at this point it's been enjoyable there's been ups there's been downs there's been twists there's been turns but there might just be one more twist left in this story for one of these teams yet and it's going to be decided in this final round everything comes down to this and it will be for all the marbles it will be for that spot in phase two it was way back when at the Sweden Major that you and I were casting a semi-final. Oh, and it went I through. I can't handle a finish like that It again. was map three. It was round 15. It was Dan Monkey versus Dan Monkeer, And it was Souls versus Rin. And Souls won that 1v1. What map but was that on, Des? That was on Oregon, mate. Oh, and it catapulted them through to win the whole thing. Now, I'm not saying whoever wins a 1v1 <laughs> in this round. It's a little bit it's earlier a bit early. in the tournament. It's not a semi-final, but it's just fitting that once again, it comes down to such a big moment for two teams. Going homes, going through to the next phase. An unexpected team competing so well. Again, Five Dan Kier got further than most teams from APAC will ever dream of getting to, to be honest. Attackers Fury have got that chance. The clock ticks it. down. We have three minutes to see who makes it through and who goes home tomorrow. Gosh, I remember my voice after that match. I remember my voice during <laughs> voice? that match. Um, it certainly <laughs> it was wasn't pretty towards the end of it, much like it's heading in that direction. Now, um, I-9 and almost the rest of Fury, it looks like, heading straight up towards Master Balcony. They're going to be attacking on to meeting, I believe it was. It is indeed yep. Dark Zero taking the third choice site that they won rather than Dorms. So it's going to be a top floor clearance coming in. We've got the Gemini clone leading Crit J in. Crit J on the ash had a great game so far has really been winning some big important battles so they're sending him in on the entry and they're wanting him to give them a kick start again the young gunner if there's any time to shine it's really going to be now dark zero happy they've wasted a bit of time here 60 seconds in they're still pushing their way to the top floor a lot of them feel they can just back away at least a little bit here down to the ground floor we even got canadian skirting his way through basement a couple of players from you know dark zero making use of it down here pamba's down there with him a pretty safe spot that you trust no one's going to suddenly come charging at you from, but 
I wouldn't write that kind of craziness away from Fury. I quite like that. I quite like the use of the echo impact nade from underneath. Pamba just finding the man on the drone doesn't do any damage, but it at least just gives them a warning. Dark will know that Dark Zero are watching. I always feel nervous when I see an echo on side and around like this as well. You've just seen so many potentials completely destroyed by this. I look back again to the Berlin Major Final, looking at when it was Rogue. You know, they won that last round with the help of a Yokai drone. It just always seems to be there in these big deciding moments. Rice, there's a, just a couple of Dark Zero players that are positioned in what could be um, tricky spots for Fury to deal with. You've got Pamba roaming around, you've got Rice on rear stage stairs, you've got Canadian on the Echo. There's a number of no problems for Fury to solve. We're down to the last 60 and no one's died yet. There's barely been a gunfight, no points of damage taken anywhere. And I just worry that sure Fury has done a lot of setup work here, but they're leading themselves into a trap. You can just see that Dark Zero are sitting back and waiting and almost inviting them to their own demise here. Nade in hand, in. wants to bounce it through, won't find the man as he's long back to way. Tim will come in down to 30 seconds. I'm getting nervous for Fury. This could be won and lost on a Yorkai drone. There's Canadians just feeding information back in. If they're available when they attempt oh, this man. plant, it could be a problem. Like all this is in a position ready to drop. He's waiting for the toxic gas to dissipate. 24 Four seconds left on the clock. It all comes down to this. It's 5v5, Des. This is absolutely unreal. BG Man looking to soften up. There comes the kills. It's all going in favor of Dark Zero. It's four versus two. And it looks like they will take down the contenders of Fury. I9 rushes on in five seconds. Dark Zero, they're scarpering, having nothing to do with this. They know they just need to survive. And survive they will, not only on Oregon, but here in Africa. Atlanta, they keep their place and they move on to phase two. It's heartbreak for Fury, but for Dark Zero, a huge sigh of relief. Both of these last two series being taken the full distance, being stretched and challenged, but this kind of thing is what will give this team a lot to focus on over the next couple of days to come into the next phase absolutely swinging. And I still love that there's some smiles on the faces of the Fury players because they know that was probably one of the best series they'll play in their lives. They can hold their tie. They've absolutely played their part. What a fantastic performance out of Fury. Um, you know, we've shouted just as loud for them as we have for Dark Zero. It was a great finish from Dark Zero. We've got to give it to them. Experience really came to the fore there. And, you know, what a great setup they had for that meeting hold. They knew exactly what was going on. They didn't overcommit to anything. They had all the answers. A fantastic finish from Dark Zero. But as you say, they're going to have some work to do, Des. They're going to be going looking. They don't want to be going to round 15 of map three too often, so they're going to be looking to get some uh, matches finished off in quicker succession, I think, when they get into phase two. I get the feeling they'll sleep pretty well tonight as well, Tim. I think after I the adrenaline. I think they probably will, yes. I think I <laughs> will, to be fair. <laughs> All of us need that good rest after that series. What an absolute screamer. We have got some highlights coming up for you in just a second. We'll take a look at the scores, go through a bunch of things before we look to close the show out there, but that really sets us up for a really exciting playing as well. Dark Zero have made it, Wolves have made it, a lot of the usual suspects are there, but not without a few heart-stopping moments from the challengers. It's certainly been close, as you say, Fury and Bliss particularly, really giving us, the, you know, those runs today of getting towards the end of things and stretching people as far as possible, but ultimately experience does just prove the winner on the day and they all get themselves safely through, but I tell you what, we've enjoyed plenty of jeopardy today for these teams it's not been straightforward. It hasn't at all. And yeah, again, looking now, we'll speak about Fury because they're the team going out here as well. It's worth shouting out so many of them. Yeah, looking across Dark, Crit and BG, man, the three fraggers that we've just celebrated Fantastic. time and time again for so many different scenarios. Like Colis, a couple of huge clutch moments throughout both yesterday and today. And I know I9's had a bit of a bit of a stinker of the third map there. I did joke that he was the Jaeger that you have in ranks sometimes. But equally, He's had some fantastic moments across the last couple of days yeah. that have you know, single-handedly won his team games. Yesterday, it looked like they were done and dusted on one of the maps when they were down zero and three, but then he wins four rounds single-handedly for them. A lot of promise in this team. I really hope that the time they've had here in Atlanta as well helps them with the scrims they've had, the experience they've gained, that this series really helps level them up and we see them come back fighting for a future competition. Completely agree. Um, Fury have absolutely played the part. They've given us some fantastic moments, um, but like I say, Dark Zero, just coming out of the victors today again you know pure entertainment start start to finish it always is with this team um, I can't say that I'm not glad to see them move on to phase two you know they're always great to have around tournaments
tournaments, and I've got the feeling that there's some bigger performances to come from them as well. It wouldn't be a real tournament without Canadian as well, let's be honest. We all need the smack talk, and I'm sure plenty more will come out once we get into Swiss as well as we enter the absolute chaos that is best of ones, best of three elimination games, you name it. I think with the Fury boys, a little bit of disappointment, but equally not too much. They know they've just played a phenomenal game of Siege. And here's how things ended. I shouted him out a couple of times. For me, Crit, what an appearance he's had this competition so far. Four entry kills coming out as well. 17 kills on the day on the other side. Really the balance across the whole team. Yes. Looking up and down, 13 is the highest, eight is the lowest a real team performance today from DZ. Yeah, I think that's been one of the big takeaways for me from Dark Zero, um, over watching them a couple of times, uh, and I picked up on it during the, the cast a couple of times that they had real big moments. I'm thinking of uh, Rice and NJR when they dealt with that 2v2 with Diffuser down. Just the way that they dealt with that as a team, as a pair, um, it's just showing that Dark Zero have got a lot of cohesion there, and that's something that teams are going to have to look at and try to break down, and it's not going to be easy. Well,